agenda before us. Does anybody have any additions or changes? I have a 10 o'clock uh, presentation from Chamber of Commerce. You can put that under 2.22. And I also have another addition, uh, an in-camera item uh, under SEWA. Put that under 6.5. Any other additions? A motion to approve. Also move. Councillor Bigger has moved. All in favor? Motion is carried. We had the minutes from the regular council meeting of December 17th. Anybody see any errors or omissions? Good eye. Thanks, Glenn. Any other errors or omissions? A motion to approve. Councillor Bigger, all in favor? Motion is carried. We also had the minutes from the public hearings on December 17th. Councillor Kester has moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. We do have a public hearing. I will move that the process for the Wheatland County Council meeting as it pertains to the scheduled public hearing will be as follows. Public hearing, first reading if required, then consideration for further readings of the bylaw for those public hearings that have been closed. I further move that the above process will take place with the absence of resolutions to go into and out of council before and after each public hearing. All in favor? Motion is carried. I'll call the public hearing for bylaw 2019-27 to order. Does any member of the public have any objection to any councillor sitting on council for the public hearing? And can administration verify that notice of the public hearing was circulated in accordance with the MGA? We can. Perfect. And were there any written submissions? Uh, we have one late submission uh, to add to the agenda of council wishes, uh, which Megan hand out now as a letter. Perfect, thank you. And if anyone else in the public uh, would like to read the letter, we have called. <laughs> so the process for the public hearing is we'll hear from staff first, then we'll hear from the applicant if they so choose, any persons in support of the application, any persons with concerns or opposed to the application, and then a final opportunity uh, will be given to address any comments presented or submitted in writing. And then our staff will have the opportunity to close. Council can just give notice when they've completed the letters then. Does anybody need more time to finish reading? I think we're ready. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Council members. Uh, this uh, is a presentation for bylaw 2019 27 to amend cell four of the direct control district uh, DC seven to add dwelling employee as a discretionary use uh, so that the uh, owner can apply for a development permit for an, a deployee or an employee dwelling. Um, so, Council granted this bylaw first reading uh, on uh, December 17th, 2019. Uh, we have completed circulation to all adjacent landowners within a mile radius, as well as all of the owners within the lakes of Muirfield uh, and Hamlet of Lealta. 
Um, generally, this redesignation aligns with uh, the municipal development plan, uh, as well as the regional growth management strategy and the land use bylaw. Um, so staff is recommending that uh, we uh, approve this and move on to second and third reading. Uh, that concludes this presentation. Thank you. Does the applicant wish to speak? Okay. Would anybody like to speak in favor of the application? Or anybody with any concerns? Okay. Any final comments? Okay, thank you. Council discussion? Not seeing any, I will close the public hearing for bylaw 2019-27. We can have consideration for further readings. Well, I'll make the motion that council move to second reading at bylaw 2019-27 for DC7. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. I'll move third reading of bylaw 2019-27 of DC7. Final opportunity for questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Thank you. On the coldest morning of the year. Yes. They said when hell freezes over. Exactly, that's right. We will now consider first reading for bylaw 2019 30. Good morning. Good morning, Council. So this application is bylaw 2019-30, first reading to designate plus or minus 2.43 acres of land from Agricultural General to a new direct control district, number 18. So I'll just scooch down. That is the aerial imagery up on the screen there. So that would be the area. Thanks for coming, um, everyone. That would be redesignated to DC 18. So if council grants the redesignation, a development permit application will follow for the existing automotive and equipment services business. The business has been operation for over a decade and there have been no complaints. The county, um, the county has no record that the existing business had ever applied or received a DP. Uh, the landowners explained that they were told no development permit was necessary for their business uh, when they originally came in. However, unfortunately, this information was incorrect. Uh, they should have been told to apply for a development permit at the time. Um, as staff wasn't able to find written records uh, or confirmation that the business can't be deemed legal non-conforming um, and a development permit is still required. So the business doesn't fall under any of the permitted or discretionary uses within the Agricultural General District. And after several discussions with the landowners to find a solution, it was determined that a new direct control district would best meet their needs. So staff has uh, determined the proposed redesignation aligns with the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan, the Regional Growth Management Strategy, and the Municipal Development Plan. Um, it supports diversification of the agricultural economy, and it isn't proposing to fragment, uh, fragment productive agricultural land. If it facilitates employment for the landowner within close proximity to their place of residence, and as the business has been in operation for several years, has proven there are no land use conflicts. Um, the application is for a new direct control district. Uh, the current definitions for agricultural support services and automotive and equipment services have been included within the proposed district. This has been done so that if the land use bylaw definitions for these uses do change, the definitions will remain the same within the proposed district. The term parcel has also been defined to mean the portion of the titled parcel that is proposed to be redesignated. And that's just because it's not the whole of the parcel that's being redesignated, it's a spot zoning. And it's um, so that when they do come in for the development permit application, we're able to delineate the redesignated area as the lot lines for setbacks. Um, so staff has received one comment from internal circulation requesting clarification on how setbacks will be measured and that the existing structures will meet those setbacks. And so that was why staff included the definition for parcel. And we double check the setbacks, which the development currently complies with the proposed setbacks uh, put forward in the DP or the direct control district. 
Um, so staff is recommending that first reading be granted and that a public hearing be scheduled for February 18th. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or discussion? <clears throat> Council's wishes. I'll move uh, first reading of bylaw 2019-30. Any discussion? Just one quick question. The reason it would go direct control is because of the mix with the residential and the industrial in the same area. Through the chair, that's correct. So um, currently it's zoned agricultural general, which doesn't allow the automotive. And then if they were to redesignate to industrial general, they wouldn't be able to have their dwelling on the parcel. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Motion is carried. A motion for public hearing. I'll move it. <clears throat> Council, uh, we have a public hearing for bylaw 2019 30, be scheduled for February 18th, 2020 at 9 a.m. in Council Chambers. All in favor? Motion is carried. Consideration for bylaw 2019 32. <clears throat> This application is to redesignate uh, 9.77 acres from Agricultural General District to a direct control district, that would be DC number 19, to accommodate an existing recreational vehicle storage business uh, as well as a country residential dwelling. Uh, so this application for a new DC district uh, within Northeast 2023-25 West 4 um, the owner has been operating a recreational vehicle storage there, which was original or business there, which was originally permitted in 2004, with their DP being renewed in 2009. Uh, their DP expired in 2015, and with the updates to the land use bylaw, uh, recreational vehicle storage is no longer permitted on egg parcels. Uh, so the um, the owner want, wishes to redesignate to have a DC with cell one with purposes for recreational vehicle storage uh, and cell two uh, for the current residents on site. Uh, the redesignation generally aligns with the South Saskatchewan, South Saskatchewan Regional Plan as well as the Regional Growth Management Strategy and the Municipal Development Plan. Uh, because of this, staff is recommending that uh, first reading be granted to bylaw 2019-32 uh, and that a public hearing be scheduled for February 4th, 2020. That concludes this presentation. Thank you. Council's wishes. Councilor Custer's moved first reading. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Motion for a public hearing. I'll move that the public hearing for bylaw 2019 32 be scheduled for February 4th, 2020. Councilor Bigger has moved. All in favor? Motion is carried. Consideration for bylaw 2019 37. This bylaw is to redesignate uh, plus or minus 40 acres from Agricultural General District to a public utility district to accommodate the construction of a municipal sewage lagoon uh, and the associated appurtenances uh, for the town for the hamlet of Rosebud. Uh, the balance will remain Agricultural General. The subject site lies here about two kilometers uh, west of Rosebud. Um, <clears throat> It, the plan is to redesignate for Municipal Sewage Lagoon uh, with pipe coming from a pump station in Rosebud and an outfall on the Rosebud River 1.4 kilometers to the south. Um, this generally aligns with the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan uh, as well as the Municipal Development Plan and the Growth Management Strategy. Uh, staff is recommending that Council move first reading. Uh, of this bylaw and that a public hearing be uh, scheduled for February 4th, 2020. That concludes this presentation. Council's wishes. Councilor Kester has moved first reading. Any discussion? All in favor? 
Motion is carried. A motion for public hearing. I'll move the motion for public hearing 2019-37 be scheduled for February 4th at 2020 at 9 a.m. Councillor Eichert is moved. All in favor? Motion is carried. Bylaw 2019-40. <coughs> Um, good morning, Council. If possible, I was wondering if we could just skip down one bylaw and do bylaw 2019-39. It is the uh, historical resource bylaw. Council's okay with that? No objection. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so this bylaw is on page 75 of your agenda package. Uh, we just have to redo this bylaw. Um, unfortunately, when we went to register the previous bylaw against land titles, the address in the bylaw was not accepted. So this is just, uh, I guess, reconfirming the address in the way that land title wants. So no, nothing changes in the bylaw itself. What address was used? Uh, I believe it was the, uh, the previous one was the, just the land location. And this one has a lot more detail in it. It's uh, the changes in this are every, everything in the, in red in here anyway, so. Council's wishes. Move first reading. Councillor Wilson has moved first reading. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. I'll move second reading. Councillor Eichert has moved second reading. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Councilor Armstrong has moved permission for third reading. All in favor? Motion is carried unanimously. Councilor Kester has moved third and final reading. All in favor? Motion is carried. Good morning. Good morning, Council. Good morning. Morning, Mike. <laughs> we should do it all together. Everybody. Uh, See, so before you, you have the uh, the first reading for bylaw 2019-40, it's a uh, road closure bylaw um, for a portion of road allowance just west and north of Highway One, uh, west of Strathmore, north of Highway One. And uh, just a, a note for every road closure, basically the process is first reading, um, circulation, public hearing. If it passes the public hearing, we send it to the Minister of Transportation for approval before we return it back for third and second and third and final reading. So today we're just looking for first reading. Are we looking to schedule a public hearing as well today or not yet? Um, I would say that just for the first reading for today, we'll see how long we can get a response on uh, the agencies back for the public hearing. Council's wishes. I'll move first reading of 2019-40 for the closure and disposal of the, to the applicant. Um, Range Road 260, line between Northwest 1924-25 for 24-24-26-4, four, described as the following. Questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Just a question. Uh, if I have a resident wanting to do that, do I just send them to you guys? Uh, yeah, through the chair. Uh, any road requests come to the land agent here, and we process them and then bring them back to council. We'll move to 2.31. Make sure I didn't miss anything. If you recall, we had correspondence from Minister Maddie's office 
inquiring whether we would like to request an appointment with him at Spring RMA, and if so, what topics of discussion we would like to request. So first question, do we wish to request a meeting? Oh, I think so, yeah. Right. And then we're requested to submit two to three potential discussion topics. MRB, CMRB. <laughs> <laughs> the CMRB has been mentioned. Is there anything else? Any issues people would like to address with the minister? Any issues staff would like to address with the minister? Uh, no, the, the issue would be the same that uh, council has mentioned. So if administration could request an appointment indicating the CMRB would be our main topic of discussion. If anybody throughout lunch or something, if anybody thinks of anything else you would like to discuss, just let administration know. Do you need a motion for that or? Okay. Ratify counselor attendance at meetings or events. Sorry, I have it here somewhere. Yep, there it is. Uh, I'd like to ratify January 7th planning and priorities meeting. January 15th council meeting with Leela here, MLA for Chestmere Strathmore. And uh, tonight, January 15th, with meeting Leah here, Alberta Environment and a compost company. There's one December one, too. On the right there. Oh, and uh, resolution RR two S four landowners meeting. Uh, it would be the Reeve and Tom, December tenth. Any questions or discussion? You. Oh, WID lunch. Sorry. Twenty seventh of January. Ooh, well. I don't have that in here. January 27th? Yeah. 15th? Yeah. yeah, the 15th. Tomorrow. Sorry. I, I've got a question. Just I don't know what the, uh, I should have talked to you. Um, the holiday train. I have no problem, like, donating my time wasn't. Helpful. I donated it. I, I know. But I, I've, got, I've got a substantial amount of miles that I do because I had to pick up a barbecue, deliver a barbecue. Yeah. Exactly. What is the proper process to do, to do that? I don't want to charge for my time. I just want to charge for my mileage. Or do I have to, like, do I have to ratify for that? Like, like I don't know what the standard is. I, I keep just forgetting. Do a resolution for your expense. Do I have to do We could probably add. Yeah, we would need yeah, a resolution. I don't think so. We'll do this one, and then we can add that. Okay. My expenses included my two-hour, two-minute drive. <laughs> Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Can I, I would like to ratify the, uh, my mileage for picking up the barbecue and delivering the barbecue for the CP train on December 20th, I believe that was. 18th. 18th, 18th yeah. Any questions or discussion? I came with Tom. Wait, well, it cost me so much money. Yeah. It's all the extra weight. <laughs> oh, no. I wasn't going to say that, but hey. All it's in okay. favor. We'll back at you. Motion is carried. I just have a question on, uh, against it, by the way. <laughs> on tomorrow's meeting with um, Minister. I hear. Right here. Yeah. Um, 3.30, right? Yeah. Yeah. I believe the initial conversations I had, they had booked it at 3 and I had booked it in. Um, but I believe it might be from 3.30 to 4.30. I'll confirm that today and get back to Council with an updated um, Outlook reminder. And that's for all of Council? And uh, then there will yeah. be a different one for... Yes, so... That's different, okay. The Housing Board is meeting with um, more than one of the MLAs in the early afternoon. 
And then Minister here requested a meeting with our council just for general conversation at 3.30. Yeah, I think you and then we're meeting with Alberta Environment, GFL, and Minister here in the evening. And oh, that will okay. just be Deputy Reef Class and Okay. Yeah. So I'll just 3.30, because I do have another meeting. Yeah, I think she estimated an hour for that first okay. meeting. Perfect. And if anybody has any specific topics, we have just been asked to forward those to her office. So far, we haven't forwarded anything. She had requested the meeting just as kind of a general. Because she hasn't yet since the election? Well, we are working on meetings with all of our MLAs to invite them in, so... Yes, with MLA here tomorrow at 3.30. So if you do have any um, issues you would like specifically to discuss with her, if we could forward them to her office, she just likes to have some briefing prior to it. Oh, so. it oh. uh, Margaret has also received the registration information for FCM. And so I registration opens, I think, in a couple of weeks, maybe. January 20th. Oh, so like less than a week. Toronto? It's Toronto. And what's the date? It's in June. June. I take myself out of the running. Oh, if he's not going, maybe I will then. Come on, who's going to buy you drinks? <laughs> not that we do that. June. June 4th to 7th. Yep, I'm good. I can. Glenn? Okay. Glenn and Donna, anybody else? I'd like to, but I don't have the time. Amber, would you like to go? I did go last year. Typically, we rotate. You can have my spot. <laughs> oh, can or you I? can have my spot. Yeah, I, it's I not your that, year. It's my year. I believe yet your networking abilities are yep. probably very, very useful. And your reporting. <laughs> It's so much better than ours. I wouldn't mind going, but I do just need to confirm that I can go. But, but I, do the we need a vote? opportunity is open to if anybody else. So we would probably need a resolution for Councillor Kester, Bigger, and Link. We have a resolution for three. Oh, for three, right. That was part of our organizational meeting, right? Okay. You need that motion now? Um, Margaret's saying we already have a motion. Like, I think during our organizational meeting, we moved for three to go. So she just needed names. Okay. All right. Sorry. Reeves' report is in the package. Not a lot to highlight. Uh, the holiday train went really, really well this year. I was really thankful for the counselors that could be there and for all of the help uh, that evening. And our staff were actually incredible as well in just helping promote it and um, organize it. Um, well organized. Very well organized. The, uh, between the community association, uh, Siksika Nation, uh, Wendy with Community Futures, it was like pretty seamless this year. Everything was very well organized. Even more people to eat. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, warm tent. We did have a warm tent. You weren't allowed in the warm tent. <laughs> <laughs> there was a warm tent. Remax uh, donated a tent and it was quite warm in there. It cut the wind and uh, the only other thing I wanted to highlight is at the Central Rural Municipalities of Alberta District 2 Directors meeting, um, I was nominated to apply for the FCM committee candidacy. So I would need a council resolution to endorse that nomination. Um, and it does involve uh, some travel for the committee work for FCM. 
I would just be applying, there would be no guarantee that I would be oh. like put on a committee. I think the president, from what I understand, the president of FCM appoints people to committees, and so it would be at his discretion, and not the current president, but it would be, so this would be for next year's committees. So it would be the next president after the AGM would appoint next summer, so. For council consideration. A... I believe it's a one year term. Sure. Yeah. So I think it would sort of start, the AGM uh, would be in Toronto in June, and then they would do new committee appointments following that, after the new president is put in place. I'll make that motion. Mm -hmm. Councillor Wilson's made the motion, so that would be to endorse the application. The nomination or application. Who pays for the travel? I like believe... I believe FCM pays for the travel. I could get back to you on that, but I believe council. But I do believe council is responsible for time. I don't know. Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head, but I would assume that FCM would pay for all. Um, I believe in I can take a quick look and see. If I should have looked that up. I wasn't. Thinking. I'm That's just looking to see if I can see it really quick. <laughs> Do we want a five minute break while I Google? Sure. We're way ahead of the time. Okay. We'll break for five minutes so I'm not wasting your time. You guys can go. A few years ago, there was a representative for District 2 of Alberta, the only district in Alberta that had a representative. And they applied to go to FCM. The district agreed to pay for hotels and traveling expenses. It was talk. At the, there are other representatives from the province to FCM. You get voted in and you run a campaign and, and you go to the convention and you get voted in various spots. So this was an extra one in the FCM. District 2 supported it. I don't know if there's any questions, but being it was District 2 that asked, it was a responsibility of District 2 to pay for it. Over the years there has been one or maybe two different reps. One for sure, but I can't think if the other one went or not. From Red Deer. Yeah. Any idea what time will come in? I don't know. What I was told at the director's meeting is that this is basically an application process that this will come to the spring meeting for like the full um, central district two consideration. Then it would be an application to FCM and then it would be at FCM's discretion. Um, they did say at one point um, like RMA had endorsed a candidate from one of the districts but that they won't do that anymore because there was some issues because if one person gets on somebody else is off or something like that so. Yeah. Prescribed. Yes, exactly. Um, there is, I, I will circulate this. Uh, there is a Central Rural Municipalities of Alberta District 2 election process for an FCM committee board candidate. There is a terms of reference and it outlines what the chair's responsibilities are. It does outline uh, the authority. The purpose of the nomination process is to endeavor to provide a rural Alberta perspective on FCM. There is a nomination qualifications and process uh, section. The term just says the term of the appointment and the frequency of the meeting shall be at the discretion of the FCM board or FCM committee chair. 
Regarding costs, it does say under per diem and expenses, payment of any per diem is the responsible of the appointed member's municipality. Costs incurred by the appointed member for travel, meals, and accommodation related to the FCM committee work shall be shared by the 14 central RMA member municipalities. And then it just, the only other thing it speaks to is administrative support, where the appointed member's municipalities shall be solely responsible for any administrative support like printing of meeting agendas <coughs> or preparation material, <coughs> scheduling travel, and then uh, submitting an invoice for travel expenses, which is done annually. So it is certainly a cost to our municipality. Mm -hmm. uh, when it was here before, I was not in favor of just the District 2 having, sending one up. I strongly encourage anybody who's interested to apply through the, through the election process for the whole province. When you go to FCM, there are elections there, and I don't believe there's any at RMA, is there? I don't think. But when you go to the FCM, there is the Alberta Caucus gets yep. together with rurals and urbans, and there are prescribed number of uh, vacancies and people through the province run for them. The problem is when you go to FCM, you're representing the whole province, but the whole province isn't paying for it. It's just the district two. I find that. You can't just go represent district two. You, you're there for the province. The province has a lot of number of the way the FCM works. There are lots of advantages of being in FCM. A representative but what cost is the per diem what we don't it would know. be whatever it depends on, the total cost would depend on the time commitment so and you don't know that no. and we can't bring this back because the deadlines before the um, I just brought it so we have lots of time we of we could get more information because I believe I apply after FCM in June oh, but I this see. Well, although it may actually go, let me just check. It will go to spring FCM, and I would need our council's endorsement for that. So you need it before February 7th? Yeah. Right. And we don't have another council meeting, or do we? I'm confused. I thought, this, is there not RMA and FCM? Isn't that two totally different beasts? This is an RMA District 2 representative to FCM. So at the director's meeting, we did elections for chair of District 2, um, vice chair, the resolution committee, and then there was an election for this, and I was nominated and accepted the nomination dependent on council support. So you need a council resolution, and I believe, I think it says in here, I'm just trying to find it, that I would need that prior to the spring RME meeting, so that's why I brought it today. Oh, I see. The nomination didn't come from FCM. No, the nomination came the from the directors from District 2. Yeah. So just at our the December 6th meeting. Yeah, it will be voted on uh, at February 7th. I don't know if more nominations come from the floor. I was the only nomination uh, at the director's meeting, but I don't have enough experience with that. So they could come from the floor, I would assume, at the spring meeting. <clears throat> like Glenn said, the, the discussion was before was when you go down there, you're, and Al Camaro, Camry was part of the reason why it got so fouled up. Mm -hmm because he wanted in there so bad that he convinced his council to pay for it. And uh, the issue is that you're not there representing Wheatland County or Division District yeah. 2. You're representing the whole province. So why should we bear the cost of that? 
if they're willing to pay for your flight and your and your rooms, they should be willing to pay for your Again. for your time there. And they can, they say no, that's your problem. Well, can, can we not? I not. I think we could bring it forward to the district two meeting because that's I believe who developed this terms of need, reference. We need your you need your info. You need. I do need to know whether council supports the nomination or not. That's a formal part of it. I have no problem of supporting it. the nomination. I would just like to see somebody else pay the per diem because that would make sense to me. But I don't know how you do that, like if we can do that or not. Well, that's two different arguments. And say if you don't like the per diem, then, don't, then they don't, they'll say don't put it right Don't nominate. Yeah, don't, forward. don't run. Too, you got to deal with one issue first before you deal with the other one. If you're going to put the rep forward, the rule is you pay for their per diem. Right now. Yeah. yeah. This is the first time I've heard of the district nominating somebody. I usually, the district nominates you, the district, but vote on the nomination. If you want support from your council, then the council has to. And that's how it's always been. The council nominates sometimes two or three or whatever there is. Little. So it looks like RMA adopted this terms of reference in February of 2018, and I don't know what the process prior to that was. But it would be, so it will be voted on at the district in February, but prior to that, it says a candidate's nomination shall be endorsed by a motion of the candidate's council. Yeah, because that's who's paying the bill, or yeah. some of the bill. <clears throat> yes. But we have to do endorse it before it goes forward to the Yes. Uh, Absolutely. So I met councils. I'll support it, but if there's a better candidate at the meeting, I'll vote for him. Of course you will. I would support that. Or her. <laughs> him or her, I, yes. I said him first. I understand. Was there a motion? Yes, Did you make a motion? I, I, I okay. made a motion to support your right. nomination. Is there any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. <clears throat> I think it's a good idea to bring forward a proposed amendment to the terms of reference, just because if it is shared value for the district, then we could request that the district consider footing the bill <clears throat> for per diems as well. So. Definitely support that. Brian, I don't know if we could just prepare like a proposed amendment to submit. I, I'll keep this open and send you. I think you have it as well, but just so it's easier, I'll keep it open. Is council in favor of that yes. as a council submitting a yeah. proposed amendment to the yeah. terms of reference at the spring meeting? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for that endorsement. Like I said, there's no... Um, it's just an application process, so there would be no assurance that we would even have that position. Um, that was the main thing in my report that I wanted to highlight. The other thing, uh, December 21st and 22nd, I spent a fair amount of time in the town of Strathmore at their Rogers Hometown Hockey event. So we had a, there was a kickoff party that they organized really well downtown. <laughs> on the Saturday morning. It was kind of a cool atmosphere. It was foggy and dark and they had fire pits and skills competitions for the kids and the Lions Club did a pancake breakfast. It was really nice. And then I also attended the puck drop for the charity hockey game that happened on Saturday evening. Um, the proceeds from that hockey game were split between Jumpstart and the Wheatland County Food Bank. And then as well, at like 1.20 Sunday afternoon, I got a text to come to the opening ceremonies. I was at home in my pajamas. I made it to Strathmore for 5 to 2, and it was really good. Um, Did you just say you're coming from Walmart? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got dressed, and I even combed my hair before I got there. Um, but it was really nice. We... Uh, Hometown Hockey did a presentation to the town, and as well, Siksika Nation was there, so we had some good opportunities. Um, I've had a great opportunity to meet Chief Crowfoot, 
um, through the holiday train as and as well at Rogers Hometown Hockey. And as well, Councillor Breaker was there and uh, taught me some Blackfoot. And I downloaded, if anybody's interested, there is a Blackfoot app and you can learn Blackfoot um, phrases and words and it actually like um, enunciates them and helps you learn that. So I downloaded it. It's a very cool app and we had a good opportunity to chat. Uh, Chief Crowfoot did indicate that one of his top priorities um, when he was running as chief was one of his priorities is to uh, facilitate relationships between the town and Wheatland County. So I thought that was really encouraging. And so far, um, I've also met Councillor Gooden, one of their other new councillors, and everybody is really open to um, just getting to know each other and establishing a relationship between us. So um, with that said, I did, uh, administration drafted a letter just inviting um, Siksika uh, for a dinner just to get to meet each other and that type of thing like we've done with some of our other um, neighbors if council's in favor of that. I don't know if we need a motion. I'm fine with motion. Shows that we all support it. Okay. I can so we, I thought maybe at lunch we could establish some dates that uh, the majority of council's available and then we could send a letter to Chief Crowfoot's administration inviting him and his council for dinner. On our dime. Yes. Like we've done with the town of Strathmore and Rocky Absolutely. View and um, we've had dinner with Newell. If you invite, you pay. Yeah. So. It'd be kind of interesting to have it in a different place other than Strathmore. Yeah, when I had asked Brian, I thought maybe we could even reach out and see if the Country farmhouse is available. It's close and in our municipality, but just yeah, depending on availability. Like so, uh, if we did do a council motion, that might be good yeah. for the expense. Are you making that motion, Councillor Wilson? Oh, sure. <laughs> I can make it. Yeah, yeah, why does it? Scott? I'll do it. Okay. Whatever. Deputy Ruth Klassen has so moved to invite Six Nation Absolutely. Chief and Council for a dinner. Dinner. Location to be determined and date to, to be determined. Okay. Any further discussion? Could it? Uh, we, because the last time we went through this process, we met with very few of their councillors. They kept sending their uh, administration heads. We only met, I think, in the three times we met with them, we met two councillors. Yep. So if, if we would. My we intention send with this that, would be an invitation for council and the chief. That's and right. whoever, That's I know that they are very busy, like I recognize that, that they are a much more hands-on um, council than we have to be. So I know that they're very busy, but if we could send some dates that were available and then just check their availability. I so. just think you just need to let them know that it's their, their council we want to meet with, not their Absolutely. public service. Yeah, it does say I would like to in extend an invitation to Chief O'Ray Crowfoot and Six Nation Council. So... And Chief Crowfoot really did emphasize that that was one of his priorities. So, find all you can do is try. Sorry. Not find out. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All in favor. Motion is carried, and I'll move to accept my report. All in favor. Oh, sorry. Uh, just a question. Of course. It said on uh, November twenty second, twenty sixth, you met with Strathmore and you discussed funding, crisp and Wheatland housing, what was the discussion on? So I did report on that at our December meeting. I think it was just on this report because I had just put like, okay. to be, I think I submitted my November report before we met with them. I think I verbally reported on that. So yeah. Deputy Reeve Clausen and I met, um, it actually just ended up being with the mayor. The deputy mayor was not available. I should have fixed that on our report. Um, it was, just pretty high level conversation around recreation funding, crisp funding, um, some previous communication challenges that had happened with Wheatland Housing. And it was more along the lines that we need to renegotiate that crisp uh, funding because I believe the contract, this is our final year of the contract with the villages. Right. All of it. They're just around the fact that we'll need to get together, figure out what we're doing with that. Uh, there was nothing. We did verbally report on it at our December meeting. I 
I don't actually know why it's on this report again. So probably because I didn't have the topics on my last written report. Any other questions? All in favor? Motion is carried. Deputy Reeves report. Uh, my report is in the package on page 96, very brief, as we didn't have that, all that much going on in December. I did forget to report that we had a, another meeting. Here now. MPC, MPC meeting. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my brain is not in there. That um, makes such an impression on you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Tom's entertaining MPC meetings that we go to. So I move my report as presented. If there's any questions, please ask. Any questions? All in favor? Motion is carried. Your 10 o'clock is here too. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Good morning, sir. Hello. It's not quite 10, but if you're ready, we're... Do you have, are you expecting anybody else to join you or... No? Why don't you come join us and introduce yourself? So we have a 10 o'clock appointment with the Strathmore and District Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, if you push the button on the microphone, and if you just introduce yourself, our meetings are recorded, so they may go on social media or okay. YouTube. Uh, my name is Sean Kissling, and I am the Executive Director for the Strathmore and District Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, essentially, I just want a, a few minutes of your time, if I may, this morning. Um, uh, as some of you may know or may not know, uh, on the 31st of January, uh, we are going to be holding the um, Business and Excellence Awards in Strathmore. Uh, in the past, they had some awards, and they were kind of quite large uh, and almost too many awards to really keep track of. This year, what we decided to do is really scale back the uh, <clears throat> awards to, I believe, 11 or 12 awards this year. And there are also um, some that will be from the Wheatland County as well. So uh, we've had an absolutely phenomenal response so far from local businesses. Uh, the nominations uh, were much more than we uh, had anticipated to be coming through. And we're very, very excited for what we're going to be um, showcasing on the 31st. Yeah, it's going to be uh, called a night in Venice. Um, Renaissance Bakery is going to be doing the catering for it. We have a four-course meal. Uh, Six o'clock would be a little beverages and uh, kind of a walk around, shake hands, say hello. Uh, Seven o'clock will be dinner, and then from there we we'll go onwards to the awards. Um, so again, the response has been phenomenal uh, from the local businesses um, and from volunteers. It has been fantastic. Uh, but I just want to more or less kind of present. There is a few opportunities as well for sponsorship um, and see if uh, the council may be interested. Um, we also kind of have some uh, empty seats available uh, for tables. But ticket sales have already surpassed what we expected to have happen uh, this early. Tickets went on sale last week and they're already going incredibly. So um, a lot of uh, uh, local volunteers have been helping out. I do believe we just secured an artist for doing a painting at the mm. event. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be very nice, very intimate. It's gonna be at the Civic Center. And uh, like I said, we scaled it back to really focus on 11 or 12 awards to really showcase um, the community. And I think the business community is getting an incredible boost right now from the chamber. Uh, quite a few of us uh, are new members on the chamber this year. And um, my whole role is to be really the the communicator between the, the, the businesses in our area and, and the chamber. And I've had some great conversations and I've had some not so great conversations so far, but I think that uh, as a chamber, we're really putting a huge push right now to connect all the businesses together to, to search forward. I mean, that's the biggest thing for us is to make sure that businesses are recognized. And that's why we're doing this uh, award ceremony on the 31st. Um, I noticed that Donna had sent a uh, handout uh, package. If anyone has any questions in regards to awards, I mean, I'd love to answer them if you have any. Uh, but then again, as well, we would love to, to ask for some support as well. I just had a comment. Of course. Um, so the 
The chamber used to have awards uh, quite a while ago, and um, that kind of got lost, and so they've they had quit doing it and kind of joined in with just lately had joined in with um, Newsy Neighbor, but now we wanted to we wanted to do it um, in promotion of of our our own our own businesses, um, like as a separate and not more not so much as a marketing tool. So um, the county did did get uh, a good response, and they were businesses from Rocky Ford, Standard, and Hazar were both were all included in that too. So all the villages were included, and and there was businesses nominated from from those, uh, and of course from our hamlets also. So Wheatland was a big part of the of these awards. Um, I do know that. Um, um, the town of Strathmore actually did an event sponsor for the 1500, and um, um, I would was wanting to put a motion forward that the county of Wheatland um, do an uh, event sponsor. Uh, we get to advertise us, our we can advertise our new logo, and um, show the businesses of Wheatland County and the villages that we support. We support their business, and um, I don't know if you want that motion now, or if there's any more discussion that you want. I'll put the motion out, and we can discuss. Just clarification: it says uh, the event sponsor. There was only one available, so is that already taken by the town? Well, there's one left. Okay. Gotcha. So you're making that motion? Yes. Any questions or discussion? And that would come from donation donations to others. Yeah, that one that we looked at. That through, yeah. Appropriate. Um, and just to confirm, it was the fifteen hundred, correct? Fifteen hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Does anybody have any other questions for Mr. Kissling regarding the chamber while he's here? Congratulations on your new position. And thank you. We did have Haley Poirier came out to our Wheatland Regional Partnership meeting and updated a little bit on the chamber's direction to be more inclusive of kind of the region and uh, Wheatland County. And do you want to speak to that at all? Do you have any plans? Just that we're going to be doing uh, a really big boots the ground campaign and get out there and just, just listening to the businesses. Um, you know, a community is, is strengthened by the, the local businesses and keeping that local, keeping everyone local, not going into Calgary. Some things you may have to, but you know, there's enough businesses in our area that we should be able to facilitate everyone. So that's really gonna be my personal push with the Chamber, um, is just growing the awareness of the benefits the Chamber can have to small businesses. So, and just this event, I believe, is going to be the major kickoff to the businesses understanding and realizing that the chamber is behind them 140%. So, in every capacity. So, that's essentially what we're doing. Excellent. We can join you too by drawing the attention to our businesses that we're aware of in our areas as well. I know in Donna's report, she outlines a little bit about the benefits program that you have, and I know that's really unique, and I've heard from people that appreciate that. So. It, it, it's, it's massive, especially to some of the smaller businesses that even some home business, they don't realize that they can get a benefit package for medical and dental. So that, that's a massive one. So is this uh, same ask going to be made of the villages as well? Because, they're, because they're, you're asking the municipalities. Strathmore. Yep. They actually, we have recruits and they're outgoing to different businesses asking for. Well, I'm not, I just mean the village councils as the well. Municipalities. Because oh, the municipalities. There are municipalities that with, within the county, you don't want to yes. exclude them from this because oh, their businesses one, are participating in that as well. One problem might be the time restraint, mm -hmm. but I will bring that forward for sure. It's a good idea. Actually, and it gets them involved. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Good idea. Any other questions or discussion? Well, thank you for coming in, Sean. And thank you. I appreciate we your look time. Look forward to the event.
Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Now we get a table of eight. Mm -hmm. invite the villages to and attend, we could fill them up with other representatives. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll move to Division One report. So, yes, it is a oh. verbal report. Oh, I only went to, well, everything that you guys went to for council, and then just I had uh, the 16th was a handy bus meeting. It was very slow December. And, yeah, that's about it. Motion to approve report. your report. Any questions for Councillor Wilson? All in favor? The motion is carried. Move to Division Three. Um, yes. So December was um, busy, mostly in my area, with uh, Lions Club, PB Club, Seniors Room, Seniors Club, Focus Group. Um, outside of that, oh, and then we had the. It's not in the report, but we had the opening of the. Of the skating arena which was very very busy all all holiday season and we had the grand opening on the Sunday on uh, New Year's Day with a ribbon cutting and a game the old against the new so we had grandparents playing against their grandkids so the older ones were 30 and over and the younger ones were 19 and under um, it was very good well, well received uh, event. Uh, we need more bleachers. Um, it was, uh, it, and what came out of it actually is uh, apparently the Wheatland Kings are looking at uh, having an exhibition game out there and uh, looking at renting it. So we're getting good coverage. It was good. We're very, very well um, received. That's excellent. Um, and that's about it. Oh, I just wanted to remind about the letter of support for uh, the Canadian Badlands to go to, to um, on, on behalf of Wheatland. Did you receive any information from examples and stuff of what they've been receiving so I far? I think we did when Mrs. Hogan was here. She left, or maybe she emailed. I think she made it emailed because I did get one. I can forward it to you. Okay. I think it might have Perfect. gone to everybody. If you find it, just forward it to Brian. Do you want a council motion for a letter of support? Uh, yes, I don't know if we did one, maybe not. Sure. So what's happening in the in tourism industry is that uh, it's been recognized that a lot of the funding and support is going um, Calgary West. And the Canadian Badlands is, is, uh, has more area, more municipalities. It's a bigger voice, but we're not getting the government um, recognition, I guess. Even if it's not monetary support, even just support. And uh, that's what we're asking for is to be recognized a little bit more in tourism, mostly ag tourism. So Donna had sent an, us an example on November 28th. I just re-forwarded it to council. It was an example that the city of Drumheller had done. Do you want me just to read the letter so you know what we're talking about? It's not super long. Dear Minister Fur, Drumheller is the heart of the Canadian Badlands and our goal is to be as iconic as the Canadian Rockies a place where you can take a step back in time, ride a vintage steam train, or dance under the northern lights. Families can explore an abandoned coal mine or dig for fossils and climb to the top of the world's largest dinosaur. Take a riverboat ride or interpret ancient petroglyphs and shop for local art and camp. In this place, you can live the cowboy life, feel the need for speed, or just lie back, relax, and take in the breathtaking landscapes of the hoodoos. A scenic drive from the several urban hubs, the Canadian Badlands is a unique travel and tourism region in southeastern Alberta. The holiday train travels through the Canadian Badlands. Visitors can also visit the Rocking Art Guest Ranch in Strathmore with majestic views. Linden, Alberta has a peanut butter pie to die for. Worth the drive for sure. 
and McGrath has an incredible golf course, just one of the many courses in the Canadian Badlands. Look into the Indigenous lifestyle with a visit to Medicine Hat, where visitors will see the Sami's Teepee. The Sami's Teepee in scenic Seven Persons Coulee lays one of the Northern Plains archaeological sites. You see the Canadian Badlands has so much to offer. ATIS, the Alberta Tourism Information Service, helps small tourism businesses throughout the Canadian Badlands and helps us to bring the Badlands to the forefront of the tourism industry. The Canadian Badlands works for small communities that do not have the funding or budgets for marketing and with your government support we know we can all succeed. We are proud of who we are and we're, we're excited about the future of the Canadian Badlands and look forward to working with you and your ministry to advance the Canadian Badlands as a leader in job creation, tourism and prosperity not only for the Badlands region, but for the province. We know the collaboration between 61 communities will help advance our province. These are exciting times in the Canadian Badlands, and we believe the coming years will prove to be our best. Therefore, I hope we can look forward to continued support from your ministry. So this would be a letter to Honourable Tanya, Tanya Fur, Minister of Economic Development, Trade and Tourism, is what Donna's requesting. Discussion? Council's wishes? <coughs> I just think back to that regional partnership <coughs> meeting we had with Rocky Ford and they had discussed how they were dissatisfied with the amount that they were getting and we haven't really answered that question yet. Yeah, and I think when Lana was here we decided that we'd go back to W to the mm -hmm. Wheatland Regional Board. Yeah. And and speak to all of them again. But I mean do we want to say we were supportive of it at this time? We were heard. We had. A, there was. I know. Realized you weren't there that day, uh, but yeah. there was a big discussion about the benefits of it. Yeah, and if I was there, I I really regret that part because it is a big voice and it is a big area, and tourism is the third highest uh, revenue that Albert, we need to concentrate on it. I, I'm not saying anything oh. against that. I'm just saying there were some concerns addressed there, and I'd like to see those concerns dealt with first. If they if they voice something and get, get an answer and we go ahead and support it, what is it? Oh, or we we're supporting the letter would come from Wheatland County, mm -hmm. not from Wheatland that Regional. Was a joint discussion with her. So the concern is kind of specifically around return on investment on the Canadian Badlands membership. So I think what the partnership had asked for is just uh, some kind of analysis by. Um, Canadian Badlands on historically what the value has been like say the last five years or I, if I'm recalling the discussion correctly sort of what they've done um, more specifically for Wheatland County the villages Strathmore um, historically and what kind of ROI there is on our membership in yeah, that. Because even Strathmore had concerns then. So bringing them back to W, uh, the Wheatland Regional Partnership. Yeah, and the, it was a very clear request to speak to that return on investment. <coughs> um, and that specific letter should be coming back for approval at the next WRP meeting, which is in less than a week. Um, we assisted the, the village of Hassar, I believe, with the letter. Um, so it should be coming back this week, or next week, sorry, for before we send it out. To go to consent. Canadian Badlands? Yeah. Okay. And you said uh, Wheatland Regional Partnership is within a week? Uh, yes, there should it's be evening, a calendar oh. invite sent out to everyone uh, January 20th in standard at the Senior Center. Um. <laughs> well, my, it, I wasn't getting these uh, for quite a while, and that was one of them that was missed. In standard? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. In standard is the host of the meeting as well. Thank you. Margaret, do we have a motion on the floor? Okay. We've heard one perspective. You would rather wait until we hear back from Canadian Badlands. Uh, I, I just think it would be appropriate, being that there was concerns 
brought forward that, and especially we have a meeting coming up, that they get a chance to, you know, we tell them we want to move forward. I don't want to insult anybody. Well, I was going to try to see maybe Lana can come on the January 20th. Yeah. There was the legitimate concerns I'll, I'll there. Just, I don't uh, know what you... Yeah. I'll email her or phone her and then I'll get back. Like, is there, a, is there a pressing timeline for this letter? Does it have to go? Can we wait till... Uh, no, not meeting? really. No, okay. we can wait till after. Yeah. I, I can bring it back. Bring the motion back. Um, if Ms. Hogan would like to come to that meeting, I would suggest that she reaches out yeah. to the oh, CAO at about the about Village of Standard. Yeah. Are you withdrawing your motion? For yes, now? I'll withdraw. Okay. All right. I think just a motion to accept your report. Well, a motion to accept my report. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Division six. Oh, sorry, division four. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, my report's in front of you. It's a slow month, and uh, I don't think we want to so we need to highlight anything that hasn't already been highlighted, so I'll uh, put my uh, report as. Any questions? All in favor? Motion is carried. Division 6. Yeah, my report's on the, on the server. If there's any questions, I'll answer. Or try to. Any questions? I'm hoping maybe uh, when we meet with uh, Mr. Leela, maybe she might have some answers for the Wademza thing, but I would more of a sensitive type of thing. We'll, I'll just wait until she gets here and then maybe we can. Uh, Nothing that I want recorded. Just a question, Glenn. When uh, do you have any, any idea when the capital funding ask will be coming from the Wheatland Housing Board? I don't have a clue. We're not near that that part right now. Uh, the process is. March 30th, I believe, maybe thereabout, the budget from Alberta comes down, or, or that's the end of this spending year, and then the April 1st is the beginning of the next spending cycle. We have our name in for funding, for planning. So that would be hiring an architect. Uh, part of the process when we hire the architect we're going to start with we have tentatively agreed in April to have an open house to let everyone know where we're at in the process once we get uh, an architect architect will for preliminary drawings we will see what sites we have available or we'll start looking consult the community but we don't have uh, any, I can't tell you when we're asking for any uh, asks. But we had a, a meeting, Alberta Health South Zone, Amy Good, that was last week, Friday, I believe, whatever day it was. I think it was Friday, wasn't it? And specifically, she addressed some of the questions around uh, requisitions and what you can use the requisitions for. <clears throat> or we can rec increase capital borrowing. We have to have minister's approval. And, and of course, we have to have the approval of everybody on the board. They're very cautious because not all lodges are owned by the municipalities. Some are owned by the province. And they're cautious to make sure that the board isn't indebting the province without their knowledge. That's why the, that process is such. In light of that, 
the requisitions, as long as everybody agrees, everybody knows what it's for, it wasn't a, a problem that way. But as far as a major ask coming to the county, I can't let you know. I just don't know. Not till we get, if we don't get funding money to do planning, kind of just stuck until we do. And that planning money for architect is quarter million dollars is what our ask is. Architects aren't cheap. I don't think there's labor of the board hiring an architect on its own. Or were in talking to one of the ADMs, they advised or they thought we should uh, hire an architect on retainer. That comes with uh, board thought being that uh, budget comes down or they're about at the end of March, we're almost there, we'll just Getting one on retainer. Well, I don't know if that answered your question. I don't think yeah, it to, did. To a point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that, it's, it's, but I, I can't be more. I did. This is not a, a timeline. At what point should we be having the conversation on what this council is willing to put into that project? When we get the ad architect. Planning ahead, we can ask the province to fund the whole 52 million, and the province would have ownership of it. Okay, so our ask is right now for the province to put in 42 million, municipalities have put in 10 million. <coughs> that way, the municipalities retain ownership and control of the lodge. It's not any much different than what's there now. That's how it was done. Asking for the 42 million, we are asking, we have in our business case, there was three options. All three options was 165. I have to appreciate, I'm going off my memory here. Yep. It was 165 rooms. Second option was the most appealing to the board because of the 165 rooms, there was some that could be rented out for cash money to help pay for the facility. There was 40 beds of SL4 split between SL4 and dementia care. If we got them 40 beds, those 40 beds, Alberta Health pays more money for them beds, plus the care to put the people in the beds, right? So if we get option two with the 40 beds, it actually creates a positive cash flow after year 17 or 20 thereabout. Does that sound familiar, Tom? Well, yeah, I mean, I've read it too. I, uh, so when yeah. we picked two, uh, I was, Favor to that. So, but of that 10 million that the municipalities are going to be on board, that's kind of what you guys are looking at as a board, correct? That's our being split which way? Uh, according to uh, equalized assessment. Equalized assessment for the county is going down, equalized assessment for the town is going up. But does capital funding have to go by that formula? Oh, you can donate. You come to an agreement with all the municipalities. Like we don't have to give our portion of the formula when it comes to capital funding, correct? You don't have to if there's a mutual agreement. Of 
to agree with the other municipalities. You have to agree with the other municipalities to get the requisition formula in for capital purchase is what I understand. Or if you have a mutual commitment put in and it covers our business case, I think that would be who's going to quip about it. But that talk hasn't come. That that's just their ask. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I'm because this is the part that I'm 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 not sure about because, like, this requisition and I, I and it, this was and it's new because I think it was mm -hmm. brought on by um, Sigurdsson, the previous NDP government. Sigurdsson, I think, was the first time that talked about the no, 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 no. the change on the Nash like. Now oh, this requisition formula has been in since sixty when we but on, but on capital. But on capital, it has never been ever. As far as I, as far as that was explained the other day, and this is a, what I need some information on, is on capital because I'm pretty sure that our ratepayers are going to have some qualms about a bunch of other people deciding on a capital, how much on a capital project we want to put into it, how much we're forced to being put into it. Because if we are forced to put into two-thirds of what everybody else is putting in on, on, on the capital end of things, our ratepayers, I do not think, are going to be very happy with that. But that is just... That's not what I got from Amy yesterday on Friday. Nobody's forced into this. Everybody has to agree to it. That's what she spoke to. And I can tell you when they built the lodge, there was a mortgage on it. When I was on the board, first got on the board, there was mortgage payments being made. And it was covered by the requisition. Since that mortgage has been paid, the requisition hasn't changed much. And uh, we've actually got a little bit of money and reserves. Previously, there was mortgage put on that building and the county paid its share through requisition process. So the lodge, being that there's different owners in the province and management bodies have different portfolios. Currently, Wheatland County, Wheatland Housing Management Body has the lodge, which is owned by the municipalities and it has the social housing, which is owned by the province. There are other management bodies in the province have social housing owned by the province, and they have a lodge owned by the province. There are other management bodies have social housing owned by the province. They have lodge owned by the municipalities and lodge owned by the province. And there's some just have lodges, some just have... so. There's a mix of everything. So when the province, the way Amy, what I got from her was, the province wants to make sure that the board isn't putting any, making them liable for anything. If it's a provincial building, the province or the board can't say, you're building a new one. Does that make sense? They can, the boards only can do for the municipalities. So she also said the municipalities have to agree. The, the board has to agree on, uh, on the spending. So when we come to whatever the government will allow, we have to uh, figure out how we're going to pay for it. So when you say the board has to agree, is it the board itself or the members within the board? Members on the board are the board. So it could be a three to five vote pretty easy and... I don't think so. I think it has to be 100%. Okay. impression I got. That everybody has to agree. I think the best would be for us to send some information to administration maybe around and for whatever reason I don't have that sheet of notes with me but around like what um, 
there was an addendum to a bill, I can't remember what, she phrased it. I think that's what Tom's referencing that came in with the NDP. Um, yeah, um, Sigurdsson amended the act about capital requisitions. And I mean, Amy was addressed, like, was asked that question, and I don't think she had an answer, like a specific answer about what that is. So I'm wondering if administration can look at whatever the end is, uh, Lori Sigurdsson. I have the numbers and mm -hmm. stuff like the number of the amendment, uh, just not with me. Okay. So I can send that to administration and just if administration can look into the process around that perhaps and. I don't know what the history is. I know the history at the lodge here. There was a mortgage owned by the board paid for by the municipalities <laughs> legislation that happened in between time but I'm just going by what Amy told us the other meeting that if everybody agrees there's a requisition on that's what the municipality so I, what I, is the split like you talk about roughly now it's two-thirds one-third that would leave us with about seven million of that then? Six point six. I don't know. If we go for the full ten million. I don't know what I've talked to Martin Shields and uh, there's CMHC. There's maybe some money available there. And talking to him, we're gonna talk to the province first. The ball is in really their court. If the province doesn't want to pay. There is no no game. Province plays, and maybe there's room for the feds to get involved. Maybe we can borrow through CMHC. Maybe CMHC will give us some money. I don't know. Like I say, we're not in that arena yet. We haven't spent much time talking about it. So when Amy come the other day, I purposely asked her this question on the requisition and moving forward on, on what it is. County decides they don't want to put in their error. I'm sure the county wouldn't be agreeable on the board, and then we wouldn't be able to borrow the money. It's as simple as that. And the or Strathmore decides they don't want to, or Rocky Ford. You think the county puts in two thirds of the money, but we have two thirds of the assessment. After the budget's done, I'm going to request to the board on what it costs individual taxpayers. I'm thinking, top of my head, that what it costs an individual rate payer in Rocky Ford is not much different than it costs an individual rate payer in Wheatland County, or Standard, or Azar, or Strathmore. As time, if we were to put on a per capita charge instead of the one we have, it wouldn't be much different except for the fact that the villages would be paying way more because they have no assessment. Their assessment is their houses. Our assessment is our linear. Strathmore's assessment is getting to be their buildings that they have assessed, their businesses. I, I'm not. So, the, so when they do the equalized assessment, it's a way to have the businesses contribute into it. Is yeah, I understand that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about is is the board expecting us to flip the 6.6 .6 million? Personally, right now, if it was to come to that, I would think that's probably the board expects that from us. Board's never said. Personally, I would say, yeah, that would be our share. Board's never just that. Got no motion saying who's going to pay what. So the town of Strathmore, 
made available their land. So when we're talking to the government about funding this, the first question is, do you have land? They don't say, is it paid for? They just wonder if we have land. And we truthfully can say, yes. Strathmore has made available some land. Giving us the land, they have a motion for two years, I believe, this land is available to the Wheatland Housing Management Body for the purpose of building a new lodge. It comes at no price, no premium to the board. The board, a meeting ago or so, accepted that offer and said that's, they're uh, without prejudice, their preferred building site. So there was about six building sites in our business case. That is our preferred site in the business case. If you were to look at them pieces of land in the business case, the Strathmore site is probably. Is that the only site? Is that the site we're gonna choose? That decision hasn't been made. But when you look at it that way, to explain it in uh, business terms, Wheatland Housing Management Body now has an option on that land. It's an option. Options cost money. This option has come to us with no, no fee. It's good for two years. So at the end of two years, they can withdraw their offer or they can reinstate it. The board Hopefully next year we get our planning done and nice big pictures done and we decide we're going to build there and then we, how are we going to pay for it? Or maybe the board picks another place. That decision has not been made yet. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm good with all that. I, I, I just want to make sure that there's no... Nobody's ganging, up, nobody's ganging up on Whitland County to pay for anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I want to make sure there's no expectation from the board that will. We haven't them. had them talk. Okay. Anything you want to add, Tom? Amber, you've been there for one meeting, but Tom's been there for a year. I'm, I voiced my concern. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about process that decisions are going, are being made. I believe it is wrong, the, the process is wrong, but I've, I've, I've verbalized those at the meetings and I was told that I, I'm paranoid, so I will stay where I'm at right now. Well, I'll ask the other two reps on that board just the same question I asked Glenn. Is there any expectations on the $6.6 .6 million from the board? I haven't uh, heard the board discuss it. Like, I, there is an expectation the way that the business plan is constructed that that funding would be made available some way, whether it was, like you said, you previously did a loan that then the housing management um, body paid off the mortgage on the existing building that they're in since 1962. They've managed to pay that mortgage off and create a, a surplus, um, kind of some seed money that could go towards a new, there's also that seed money that would play into the capital that the board would have available and potentially the sale of the building, the existing building and site, because uh, the housing board has that as an asset. Um, there hasn't been any cost breakdown at the two housing meetings I've been at so far since joining that board about how that would be like split or funded or that type of thing? Yeah, no, it's the same, what the, the implied, what I get from it, the meeting is the implied is there's gonna be, town's coming up with 2.4, we're gonna come up with the remainder of the 10, because there's, we've got 2.4 basically from the town, and then there's, basically seven million in there that has to be if we're if we're we need 52 and we're going for 42 and I don't know there's been no plan laid out on how that 
that seven is going to be covered. Like if it's covered with a, you know, under a mortgage, but, but none of that, none of those discussions have been held yet. But I do, I do get the implied feeling, and this could be me, and that that seven million is on the shoulders of the county. And I'm not sure that's fair. Just one correction: the two point four or whatever Strathmore is, that's not. That's not their contribution. Not agreed to contribution. Maybe their share is only what they figure is two million. Then we would owe for the four. Or if it's five million, then they would have to kick up more. We haven't had them talk, so don't. I'd hate to have that two point four saying that's what Strathmore has got in. The contribution, but it's not. made it available in the way of that option. How the funding structure comes down is, and we agree that's how it comes down. And if we use that land as the 2.4 there, we have to get, of course, assessed and everything else. I would, I would refrain from, it makes sense. Yeah, well, I, I think we have to wait until whatever plan is going forward is how that's going to be funded, I think, and, and that is. Didn't say, there is another option I didn't bring up. If the municipalities kick in the full 52 million, how committed are we? Hospice is putting in three, half of it raised. And it was important for them. Important for the hospice, and it should be important for the lodge to gain ownership. Because the hospice can tell or have scrutiny over who uses the building. own it like we currently do. We have scrutiny who. Guys would just be overrun. We can prioritize local residents. We for have admission. a point system. Important that we. How important? How much money are we going to put into it? Right. All the way, fifty-two million is. Palatable. The ten million is. Personally, from our meetings with the minister and the ministry staff, I think there, and this is just purely my personal opinion, I think there could be some value in us as a municipality establishing our contribution because that is one of the questions that the <clears throat> ministry asks is how are you planning to fund this? What is your ask? Um, how are you funding the portion that is not part of your ask to the province? And to this point, we have not been able to answer that to the ministry, what our municipality's contribution could be. The town has indicated that they have offered the land. Um, but they haven't indicated that it's more than that. No, or how that would break down in, like Glenn uh, mentioned, contribution versus donation, all of those types of things. Um, and I don't know where we're at, but I, from our meetings with the ministry, I think there is value the thing that you want to do when we're looking to serve, and we have like a massive population of seniors right now. We have a consistently long waiting list at the lodge. We have a shortage of appropriate housing in the region for seniors. Um, we need to set ourselves apart from, I believe there's around 100 asks into the province right now for seniors housing. And so they have said we need to find ways to uh, highlight our project to set it apart to make it unique in some aspect and I think there's a lot of different ways you can do that so the offer of the land from Strathmore I think helps with that because we have land now we have an option so, but is there a flavor of this council talk to the other municipalities about how we're going to come up with I think it makes sense. It is one of the 
what I've heard, one of the questions when we meet with to me, Minister Pond and to her me team. it's a hurdle. So it's do you clear it now or do you clear it later? I'd rather have it cleared now and then the project move forward and we know where we're going. But that, I mean, I'm not the person negotiating. I'm just more comfortable that way with the budget we've been through. I know Strathmore's had the same challenges. Um, I think it, uh, there's some it's benefit to doing that now and uh, how we. So our ask province. Or to take out the loan for $52 million, the province would pay mortgage. Sitting on the $10 million, the county negotiate that down to five or, or maybe it's 12, but there's nothing wrong with having the talk. Are we, how much are we prepared to go in for? It would, uh, I'm thinking. Certainly bring it up at the standard on Monday night. Day longer report than this to give. I think it's Well, I don't think it'll hurt to bring it up at the meeting in standard and get it and everybody will be in the room anyways. Exactly. It's a good idea. And then it's done. We figure it out. So so what's the position of this council going into that meeting? Not ready yet. Right. Wait till you hear what the meeting is first. Put it up as a discussion issue. Put it on the floor there. And I think this council, I think we would lean on administration to bring forward some ideas around different ways that could be funded. Like um, Amy, when she was there, also mentioned like P3s. There's there's different ways of kind of making our project unique and stand out and um, fit within our current government's mandates and priorities. And um, I think the board needs to be looking at that and this council needs to be looking at that. The housing board primarily. Who is this Amy that you speak of? She was the executive director for seniors and palliative. Amy, Amy Good's position. Oh, she's Southern Alberta's uh, health. I think executive director. Executive she's director from the province. From AHS. Yeah. AHS. Okay. Through the chair, I don't think if if we're going to bring it up at a at the regional meeting and standard, I don't think it's fair to go in there with a pre -con preconceived idea of what our position is otherwise there's no need for the I'd like to hear a bit more I don't know much about executive it. director for seniors palliative and continuing care for Alberta oh. health services okay. but we yeah, also heard that from that you know the minister yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely bring it up. We'll have to ask for a place on the agenda. On the agenda. Mm -hmm. We'll have to put on the agenda. Yeah. Good discussion, I think. Thanks, Cliff. Um, if there's any other questions, I'm, I'm just kind of shooting in the dark here. Is there a motion to accept your report? Not yet. I'll make it. Okay. <laughs> any further questions or discussion? I don't want to cut it off, but. If we're ready, all in favor? Motion is carried. Division seven. Um, oh, Reflink. Sorry. Would it be possible for council just to make a resolution behind their request from administration, just so we have it correct and we can bring it back? Um, kind of what I gather from that conversation is something along the lines of uh, that council direct administration to determine capital requisition requirements for Wheatland County in relationship to the uh, potential new facility to be built? I think that could be good just for background information, just around process and mm -hmm. I don't know council's thoughts. Sure. Glenn? Yeah, sounds good. Yep. Anything else? Um, did council also want administration to look into ideas on how to fund the capital portion as well? I think that could come after we have a conversation with our regional partners. Okay, so just the capital requirements then? Yeah, I think just in general. I have to ask. Did you find out, staff find out, 
or the meeting and standard with that. Average residence in Wheatland County pays for a lodge requisition. Mm -hmm. I think Average an easy... residence and standard Rocky Ford, Strathmore, and Azar pays. Or you could do it, Glenn, like on a $100,000 residential tax. All we need to know is what our requisition is. Mm -hmm. and you can figure it out. Well, the, Just I'm the hearing question. there's a fear that three municipalities are going to tell Wheatland County what to do. Yeah. That fear comes at a huge price for them municipalities. So if I knew what the, the people that actually vote are paying, if it's much the same money all the way across the board, then it kind of takes that out. Does that make sense? Nobody's going to make Wheatland County pay six million dollars when they have to pay a hundred thousand bucks out of theirs. Because it costs money to vote, right? And if it's proportionate, this funding model requisition has been a thorn in the side at the AMD and C ever since I've been there. The last couple of years, there's not been any motions. But municipalities, counties inherently don't like it because if it's perceived we pay twice as much as the towns. The way our linear is eroding and the way the towns are growing, I can see in a few years we'll be equal or maybe less than. We've taken our linear away from us. It'll be a non. Strathmore will be in the position of wondering what the hell's going on. But at the end of the day, for individual ratepayers, mm -hmm. how saying. much they're putting in, I think it works out pretty close. When I think of it in my head, I think it's a pretty, I won't say fair, but it's individual taxpayers. It's. Do we not then have to bring into the deal that? I've never seen the numbers, but how many people from the county of Wheatland actually use the lodge, as opposed to how many people that live in the reside in the town of Strathmore use the lodge? So, if you're going to use uh, go along the line of a user fee, then which is probably eminently more fair, then the requisition should probably be skewed the opposite direction that it is now. At the lodge, there's people I know; they're all from the county. I know, but I, they all transition, like most of them transition through the town. So once the town is made. So they're, they're a county rate pair for 60 years. They go to Strathmore for two, and then they're in the lodge. Well, I think, it, well, part of that has to, I think it has to work that way. Mm. A bunch of people from the lodge that have never, ever lived in the county. They're from Strathmore. There's some in the lodges and not just here, but in other lodges that are residing in the lodges that have never lived in the county of Wheatland, the town of Strathmore, the town of Drumheller, or any of the other ones. They're, come, they're members of family that they've yeah. brought in from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And you're paying for them too, so. I'm, I'm not saying that the system is, we yeah. do it strictly on that, but all I am saying is back when this was done, when yeah. the first requisition was done, there was a far... The, the amount of people that lived in the county outweighed the town of Strathmore significantly. Not Strathmore only. in 62 was had, what, 800 people in it? Maybe 600? So, you know, I mean, it was the same size as Rocky Ford and, and Standard in 62. In, in 62, the municipality and the town were about the same within a, within a few, few numbers. Right. And, and, and well, and I, I totally to agree grow. with uh, Glenn saying... Um, Wheatland residents and standard residents are pretty close. We, we saw those numbers a year and a half ago. Well, we were kind Wasn't of guessing far. at but it, right? Yeah. And they weren't that far off. But do the, are our residents okay with our business revenue going to a capital project in another municipality? <clears throat> And that was the happening. last comment I was going to make. Is I appreciate the comments about the residential tax. What, what, what do those benefit? What do those businesses see from us as 
we don't do a lot for bit like those taxes don't don't do a lot for those businesses. Well, and we just have to be careful about our non-residential tax burden in terms of business attraction and retention because it does impact our yeah. non-residential tax base. And so it's just a counter thought to the impact to the residential tax base. But good discussion. Mm -hmm. It is good discussion. Excellent. So. So yes, all all of those. <laughs> All of those. All of those. Okay, so just so. <laughs> for clarification. Just so administration is clear, so we're going to find out the capital requirement uh, requisition requirements for Wheatland County for new proposed facility to be built uh, by the Wheatland Housing Management Body, and uh, the requisition on a per capita basis for each municipality, and provide that information back to council. I think, Glenn, are you just asking for Wheatlands for <coughs> administration? I think we can get that number for the county. We can okay. do our average house. You'll have to ask, I'm thinking, the CAOs or the other municipalities. Mm -hmm. But I'd also like but to do the similar similar calculation for calculation. comparability so purposes. It's apples to apples. Yep. But Sounds we good. can't leave out the, like, we have to make sure people understand that a lot of our business tax will go to this as well. Because that's it's a and the neighboring that. municipalities requisition, yeah, but our business tax would be a well, very much on a per amount. capita basis, and they can't just just because it's not our residents paying that, the town of Strathmore or the villages can't say, oh well, it's you're you're just taking it from your business. It's fine. You're, it's not, it's not coming from your residents. You're fine. If it comes from the way that Brian's going to figure out these numbers, they'll see it. It's Or some because of the linear. That's the way it is. Okay. We need somebody to make a motion to direct administration to gather that information. So moved. Councillor Wilson has moved. All any further discussion? All in favor? That was a long report, Glenn. Geez, yeah. shorten that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> and Margaret, did we vote on the report? I don't think we did. Yeah, we, we did, did vote on it? Okay, yeah. sorry. Um, was that all we needed? For Ben, Benny. Okay, Division 7. Ready? We're ready. Okay, the report's in front of you. I've got a, I, uh, when you go through there, uh, the Alberta Care, I missed putting something in there that I'll, I'll just verbally report on. The rest of it's in front of you, and uh, there'll be some discussion in camera later on uh, part of through Drumheller, dealing with Drumheller solid waste at Sewa. But uh, through an Alberta envir environment with Alberta Care, working with Alberta Care and, and, the, and the minister of the province, because of their, their work, the, uh, the, the provincial legislation has changed their, their uh, uh, allows, they're now, but they're, they're now gonna allow Ar ARMA to look at the pricing of uh, all these recycled products because they haven't changed since 2008 when uh, uh, paint came in, 92 when scrap tires came in, TVs and computers in 2004, the, the price had never changed at the, the point of sale. And uh, up in uh, Norway, we found out this year at Alberta Care that some of the municipalities in northwestern Alberta have, have suspended their recycling programs because of the cost they're getting out of it. they're just landfilling the stuff so that becomes a that, that's becoming an issue so the province has changed the, the way they've done that and they're allowing arma to revisit that whole thing and, and put change the pricing on it but they can't do it without uh the minister's approval but it doesn't have to go through the cabinet anymore so they've got rid of some of the red tape so if armor comes up with the and they can justify it then then there'll be some changes made at the point of sale which is a good we've been pushing for that for probably five years trying to get that in place because it's some of this recycling stuff is it's beautiful to watch see it happen but the cost has to be covered somewhere and that's so it's back to that producer responsibility type thing also in Alberta, just as a as as history, since uh, 2004, 9.5 million end of life TVs and computers have been recycled. 24 million liters of leftover paint, 
since 2008, 118 million scrap tires since 1992, and 1.7 billion liters of used oil since 97. So we have been moving a lot of product and moving it through the thing, but we don't want to lose that that forward motion. So that's just uh, information. But everything else is on my uh, report there. So if there's any questions, I'll answer them. If not, I'll move my report. Uh, I don't know if you have the answer, but maybe in Rocky Ford, uh, bins for the cardboard and newspaper have been removed. Is there a plan or do you know of a plan? Yeah, there's new bins. There should be new bins in place. There's, they're the smaller. The problem was with the bins that we had, the product that was coming in was, was because it sat there for so long, it was getting, we were ending up landfilling some of it. It wasn't recyclable enough. Plus, we were hauling air. We weren't getting anything out of it. So this new program that they've come up with now, they've got they've got smaller bins. They'll be picking them up more often, and it may some of the some of the routes may have to change depending on how much volume is coming in on them. But it's just they've just got all the bins in place in the last two weeks. Okay. So they're smaller. Uh, 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 those bins that you pick up with a with a truck and haul, yeah, that yeah. type of thing, and haul them away. So, there's supposedly that's supposed to be the cat's meow, and uh, we'll see what happens. If not, then we'll go back. We've still got the other bins. If it isn't working, we may have to put some of them back out there. But that was the problem, that especially with the, with the newsprint. It was coming in. It had so much weather and moisture on it that we were losing the, the, any advantage we were getting out of it. So. And on the cardboard side, we were hauling air, and it was costing. There was two or three sites that were really diligent, and the tonnage was way up on them every time. But the other ones was a little, it's a little, some of it's due to uh, the, the the maintenance or the operators of the sites weren't uh, making sure that they were busted, broken down, and put in and pushed up, and so. But yeah, so that's sorry, that's. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, we may have to go back to the other bins. Yeah, because with the front load, it gets in, the truck goes around, picks them all up, and then it compacts it all. Yeah. And then that truck goes in. Any other questions? No, sir. Plus, oh, and the other thing with those bins, we don't own them. We're renting them, so we're not, re the other ones we owned, and we were expensive. We were, the, the cost of repair and maintenance was, so we don't have that anymore. That belongs to the hauling outfit now that they, they look after that. So. That's Any it. other questions? I'll ask a question. How's the new contract going? There's some, there's some blips. We're working with them. We're, I, uh, Tammy's been phoning me, and uh, she's supposed to have an executive meeting coming up the end of the month to discuss some issues with it and uh, we'll go over it at that time but there's some growing pains obviously and uh, we'll see what happens okay. there's a motion to accept councillor armstrong's report all in favor motion is carried Number. yes i got a addition for my report okay last meeting it was discussed and I'm thinking the villages are going to report back to their councils that uh, the requisition for Wheatland housing will be about a 50% increase and that 50% increase is for the hospice I haven't decided but it's possible some of the villages wanted a number so we the hospice wasn't at the last meeting we had uh, no, Casey Serbanacle, he passed away on the board, so we're just waiting for the hospice to get back. Increase. So it's a possibility of a 50% increase tentatively on the budget. Now oh, you know everything that everybody else said. You know. So through the chair, then, just a question, uh, that increase, is that dedicated to the hospice society, yes. or is that just... We haven't done the increase, but when the hospice comes, we would like to have them have the ask, and it would be for their, cover their operating expenses, but 
start building up a little bit of reserve for them because eventually it's foreseeable that that would double again after we get the build done but depends when the build comes and depends on the donations and everything we're there for a backstop we're not there to pay the, all the operations but we're there to backstop it Yeah, and that, because that was part of our January meeting. I'm glad you brought it up because it could come out with the villages, but that would be part of our reports for our January meetings as well. All right, thank you for that. Interim Chief Administrative Officer report. Uh, good morning, Council. So on page one or two of your agenda package is uh, my monthly report. Um, just a couple things to highlight. Uh, so the villages, uh, the three villages within the county and five RCMP uh, detachments have been invited to the February 4th Council meeting. Um, that is to discuss uh, RCMP strategic goals. Uh, we've heard back from most and most attachments. Um, I believe we're just waiting on one municipality. Um, we have an upcoming meeting with the development consultant, with a development consultant to work on our RFP as well. Uh, that was something that uh, just administration is gonna get working on. And then other things we worked on in December, uh, the budgets, the operating and capital worked on that. Uh, worked on various projects with the interim fire, uh, fire chief and then also worked on uh, various legal matters in relation to the compost facility in Division 5. Perfect. Division 5. Any questions? A motion to accept his information? So no moved. Everybody. Donna can do it. Councillor Bigger. Yeah. Oh, I had a question first, though. So. Okay. Uh, just wanted to make sure, did you hear anything back from the post office? No. We have not heard anything back okay. from the post office as of yet. Also move. Uh, any further questions? All in favor? Motion is carried. Corporate and financial services report. Yes, so on page 104 of your agenda package is the corporate and financial services report. A couple things to note uh, that will directly impact either assessment or taxation revenue. So there was a, a very large assessment appeal that was occurring back from the 2016 taxation year. Um, so it, it was a long drawn out pro process. However, the last step that just occurred is that the Alberta, Alberta Court of Appeals uh, upheld the county assessment. So that's very, very good for the county. Uh, that was about uh, just under $900,000 of taxation. So what that did was it confirmed that the initial assessment was assessed in the correct classification. Um, so, which means that that ratepayer would have to pay education tax and property tax as well. So that's good. Um, there's also been some appeals on some dip properties uh, that could have an impact to municipal revenue of about 67,000. Uh, we're finalizing performance reviews for staff as well, um, outside of assessment. Um, so, and some are still outstanding, so they're not all complete as of yet. Uh, we got the budget, the approved budget uploaded to the website for public viewing. And then our new auditors, MNP, were in in December and we worked with them uh, to kind of help them with some initial interviews and uh, interim testing, so. Any questions regarding the corporate and financial services Not a I don't know yet. Find out pretty soon. Not yet. I, th I think we owe Dennis and his crew and his group a, a vote of thank you for getting that tax back to us because he's he's put in a lot of hours Absolutely. making that come through the way it has. Yes, that specific uh, property went through the the carb appeal, yeah. um, and that carb hearing isn't a typical two hour hearing. That's a full week long hearing um, with with multiple legal counsels as well. Um, so this occurred back in, I believe, 2016 it occurred, so before this council's time. Um, and what that does is that confirms the assessment for future years as well, so it's not just for 16, so it kind of solves, or I guess puts forth a, a statement that that is assessed correctly and it belongs in that class, so. Yeah, please pass along thanks from council to the department. So in regards to all the costs of all that, who bears that? Does the county or do we get coverage? The county does bear those costs. However, they are essential to d defend the assessments. So the cost of that specific CARB could be within the range of $100,000. Yeah. 
I just think it'll be made up pretty fast in the next few years. <laughs> uh, and actually, one other point I'd like to make out uh, or put forward is that we did receive some correspondence from Municipal Affairs uh, in regards to the assessment changes for 2020, which or sorry, 2019, which impacts the 2020 tax year. Um, we did circulate that to council. However, we did not get an opportunity to put it in this council's agenda package, and we will next month just for uh, public transparency. Um, so what happened is that the province is going to get more, in, or more stakeholder engagement for the assessment model changes. However, they did continue the program of the 35% reduction in the, um, this time it's assessment, not tax dollars, of those shallow gas wells. So what that is, it's an impact of approximately $143 million in assessment going down for the county. So realistically, during the budget process, we had a much worse case scenario for 2020. So that's kind of been avoided. However, in 2021, it's still no promises. They're still reviewing that whole assessment model. So we're kind of, I guess, fortunate for the 2020 year. However, in 2021, we'll definitely have to still sharpen our pencils, still look for efficiencies as we always do. With that judgment from the Queen's Court bench, is there back taxes payable then? or um, For that one specifically, the property owner has paid the full amount. So okay. even, if, um, even if everything had happened and let's just say they hadn't paid, we'd still be applying penalties to their taxes. So, and I believe it's around the range of 5% twice a year, so 10% kind of annually. Um, but they are paid, so it's no change of receivable money anyway, so. This uh, form that we just got, what, have you got a deadline on when you need that back? Uh, no, uh, those are most likely optional, uh, depending on if a financial situation changes for a counselor. Uh, those are just the TD1 forms that Councillor Armstrong's talking about. So. Oh good, so I don't have to worry about it, I have not changed. Okay, uh, we, we can discuss that afterwards. I have, well, yeah, never Any mind. other questions regarding the corporate and financial services report? A motion to accept his information. So moved. Councilor Armstrong has moved. All in favor? Motion is carried. Community and development services report. Good morning, Council. <clears throat> Good morning. On page 106 of your agenda package is the community and development services report for November of 2019. As you can see, um, in that month and up to that month, um, things have been busy in the department. We have the actuals for years to date um, for the end of November. The completed development permits, safety codes permits, um, land use bylaw designations, uh, redesignations are either slightly above or slightly below the 2018 actuals. So uh, everything seems um, status quo in that regard. With regards to community services, Staff were working on the holiday train that came off with great success, and they also assisted the town of Strathmore with the hometown hockey event. Um, as well, we are continuing on with the open space recreation and cultural master plan, which the engagement will be um, beginning, and council will have a session with regards to that engagement, piggybacking on the municipal development plan engagement uh, towards the end of the month as we continue in that. Uh, venture. With regards to economic development, ECDEV also assisted in the holiday train event as well as the um, hometown hockey with Strathmore. Uh, it was a great success. Uh, we will be bringing back a kind of reconnaissance report uh, to council as requested uh, with regards to the planning and the event planning and the financials of the holiday train event just to prepare for uh, the upcoming years. Uh, geographic Information Systems, GIS, uh, I think Council has seen uh, some of the maps that we produce with that technology. Um, our GIS analyst has held tutorial sessions with various divisions throughout the uh, county to bring them up to speed and to teach individuals uh, the useful applications of that software. And again, I'm just taking you through um, some of the applications that went on in the month of November and years to date. So you can see those actuals there. Um, the final report for the year to date of those actuals obviously will be brought back next month for your review. With regards to the CPOs, um, they've been doing training, ongoing training. They attend rural crime. We're going to be putting on a rural crime uh, open house uh, in the near future in the Carsland area. 
Um, so there are their actuals and their statistics. And that's my report. Any questions? Uh, not a question, it's a comment that uh, an, an apology for not making your IDP last night, Nazar. I had fully intended on coming into it, but they booked me to curl at 7 o'clock, and the men was over there, so I had to look at my priorities. <laughs> they bought me more whiskey than you guys were going to do, so. <laughs> we had cookies, though. They were really good. Um, I heard it was well attended. We or, did actually yeah. have a decent turnout, and there was, the biggest question was, some people had gotten letters about our upcoming MDP uh, review, and so we had to kind of delineate those two processes. But I knew there was, was going to be a lot from Hazar that attended. I didn't think there would be <coughs> too many from the municipality. <coughs> yeah, it was maybe good discussion. Two. Maybe two if I figured it right. But anyways, good. Any other questions regarding the Community and Development Services report? A motion to accept his information. So moved. Deputy Reef Clausen has moved. All in favor? Motion is carried. Request to waive 2019 municipal taxes and rent. It's about shit. So on page 115 of your agenda package, you have a request to waive the 2019 municipal taxes from the rent. Um, so the recommendation is to maintain the municipal non-residential and municipal residential improvement property taxes. Um, and the second uh, recommendation is to approve the waiving of the rental fees in the amount of $2,793.38 for 2019 as per section 4.03 of the lease. Now this lease is owned by Wheatland County, but we lease the property out. So this is the reason why it becomes taxable as it is leased to a second party that is operating the business and has a residential unit. Now in previous years, there has been requests to waive municipal portions of taxes for both commercial and residential on this particular property. Those have been waived. This year is different. Uh, we're recommending, staff are recommending that we maintain those taxable rates. And the reason for this is because in the past, improvement plan amounts, the, the, the leasee is, has to submit an improvement plan to the county. This year they have not, and we had to go in and deem what is an improvement plan and what is just regular maintenance. So in the past, those improvement plans have been higher than the rent and taxes combined. Now this year they're significantly lower. So we're recommending that those taxes maintain as well as this, this business is competing with other businesses in the county as well. But we are in fact, what has been deemed improved um, in a spreadsheet in the supplemental package, the amount of $2,793.38 is recommended to be a forgiveness of their rental fees. So that's the, that's the difference of previous years compared to this year. And I'll take any questions. I have a question. I just saw this about chlorine system in here for the site. Am I to understand then that is there a separate drinking water system there? And if so, is it a licensed operator that's looking after it? Through the chair, I don't have that information. I would look to other administration if they know if there's anything different on site, but I can certainly get I back to you. I see that the red flags go off because I know a lot of campgrounds have had to have licensed operators and small system operators now. If that's the case, on that. I'll note, make a note. Yeah. Does it have to be? Yeah, you can't. Yeah. Is it? Is not a chlorine system an option too? No, it's not. Not when there's public drinking water anymore. Okay. What is the term for the lease for timeline? Are they still within a lease agreement? I know I read it was 25 years, but I saw the motion in 2016 to direct administration to renegotiate. I think it was a five-year lease. It was an option, wasn't it? Yeah. So, so, th so through the chair, I can pull the lease up. If my memory serves me, it is a five-year um, with the options to extend, but I can certainly confirm that. I can get my hands on that lease pretty quickly. Yeah, there's, on page 116, it says in a 2016 County Council resolution, 16-06-35, uh, that county administration negotiate with the current leasee in order to update the 25-year lease agreement that accommodates a change in name. 
and incorporates lease clauses consistent with a similar lease arrangement within Wheelan County, but that so far that has not been successfully completed. So, and I, my second question was, there's a clause out of the existing lease referencing the rent, but am I to understand that the tax is not referenced in the lease agreement? That's correct. Okay. So what but it, it is, is, is what it is, yeah. It's, this is practice, so because there is a, a structure on the site, right, that's the difference. Owned by the leasee. And in terms of net improvements, obviously that has significantly exceeded the equivalent rent and tax in previous years, but the lease agreement reads that that would be done on an annual basis. That's correct. So the improvement plan is to be submitted on an annual basis. In the past, to my understanding, there was improvement plans submitted, but things are getting a little more difficult to be it as it may, communication, etc. But an improvement plan was not submitted for 19. And the breakdown of what the expenses, there, there was a letter submitted and included in your agenda package with those expenses submitted, which you can see $2,793.38, A, B, and C on page 116, and then $3,236.70, A and B. So staff determined that A to C, new piping, clean outs, water lines and electrical lines and fencing were improvements to the site, totaling that amount. And the tub style sink and office trailer and replacement of hot water tank were considered a maintenance and not el eligible expenses to the improvement plan. So I do see that an improvement plan was submitted. Um, it says on page 116 in the top paragraph but that it wasn't completed or followed. But part of that was because of the timing of our staff removing old playground equipment. So, And then it also says in that section of the lease agreement that is referenced there and quoted that the value of land improvements will be determined by the landlord. And now we are like, I'm just yeah. trying to sort this out because now it looks like we're assigning value to improvements versus what was outlined in the improvement plan. And my other concern is just the fact that part of the improvement plan wasn't completed because of like the fact that we didn't get the playground equipment out until August. I don't, it's hard to tell from this report, but I, it looks like the intention was possibly to have put in playground improvements. But is that an improvement that would be It would be maintenance, yeah. It'd be a, it's, not a it's not a necessity to the... I think the business. question would be if it would increase the value, like we have to look at it from the value of our land, if it would be an... That's how I was looking at it, is if it would improve the value of the land or property. And I look at it, it'd be an improvement to the business, but I don't think it'd be an improvement to the land. But, but maybe I'm wrong. I think throughout the years, a lot of through the chair, I'll I'll, I'll make the re move move the recommendation that staffs put forward in it, in its entirety. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're following the lease agreement and in the lease agreement it does say that uh, the oh no sorry the value will be by the landlord where I'm struggling with it is just the fact that part of that improvement plan hinged on our actions and I don't know if it, I I don't know enough about it if the playground equipment like it might have been helpful to see what the improvement plan was for this year and if it did, do you know, did it include replacement of that equipment playground or what was the part that was not completed? So to my understanding from our community services coordinator is that the, the whole conversation of the increased 
the improvements of the playground equipment is precisely what Councillor Bigger was indicating was that it is more so it's not a improvement of value to the to the land it's more so to the business and as the landlord we evaluated the submissions the, right so the, the, the piping lease, the leaser is is the leaser is making money because of that improvement it's That's not right. it's not an improvement for our benefit it's an improvement for their benefit I think that may likely be the case with many of the improvements like just plain devil's advocate because they would be utilizing them well some of the other improvements that they did when they were doing fencing and watering and sewer Trees. that stays that stays that stays yeah. with the land it doesn't leave if they leave we still have that improvement that playground equipment can be outdated tomorrow so to me it's okay. not an improvement for our sake it's an improvement for their increases their revenue it doesn't do much for us mm -hmm. I'm and sure, is there no excuse me I'm yep. sure the, the leaser Lisi knows that this is coming forward can't confirm just as my my coordinator is away on holidays I can't confirm that conversation has taken place sitting in here but I didn't I don't see him here so well there is an October letter from the Lisi um, that is also, and that was the other point I just wanted to ask is if council does have an appetite to consider the $196,000 worth of improvements since 2009, um, it does show like each year how much they exceeded the. It wasn't the agreement. They right. Appeal. And that's, it does need to, we need to follow the agreement. I agree with that. <clears throat> Where I get stuck is if we delayed some kind of improvement, like by not pulling out the playground equipment in the spring or something like that. So through the chair, if it would just provide some level of comfort as well. My, uh, the community services coordinator did really consider this one over the last month or so and went back and forth with the lease agreement and every other form of documentation. There is quite a large file. So I would, if that provides a level of comfort with regards to weighing what's in the lease agreement versus what's, what's in front of you right now. And will there be ongoing work or has that 2016 motion, like I'm just thinking to update and clarify the lease terms regarding taxes and rent and that kind of thing. Will that be kind of reinstituted or has that just been kind of so, left um, at this point? So, Madam Reeve, I think uh, what's important here is that we do start a conversation with regards to maybe amending conditions, any stipulations in that agreement, um, so that both parties are ultimately happy and we don't have to kind of bring. Yeah, and I like think for Council's forward. comfort, too, that improvements are improving the land value. Um, list like, what, if you could list what is an improvement. Yeah, or help clarify the, clarify, clarify the definition yeah. of it or something. Exactly. Yeah, certainly we can do like a, what is a maintenance, what is improvement, land improvement, what rides with the land, kind of what improves a business versus what is land improvement. Stipulate that so that there is clarification. And if within that process that can be reviewed prior to like early enough that the plan could be amended if something is deemed maintenance versus yeah. an improvement. So. Yeah, certainly we can report back. I would say maybe Q2 or Q3, like summer months about this, if that is fair with council. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Through the chair, with Scott's concerns, I would suggest he put a motion on the floor for staff to uh, review <coughs> to look into that issue. Review the compliance if it's a to concern that. with liability or that, then you yeah, should absolutely. have a motion on the floor for it. Yeah. Going to make that motion? Word it. <laughs> just investigate. Yeah, just investigate. Just the council directed Investigate, make sure that all the water <coughs> compliance is being appropriately followed. Because uh, <coughs> that can be a considerable expense to the people there and risk and being that we own the land. We have to make sure it's done right. 
small small systems is what it'll be under. Because next year that could be considered as part of the improvement to the land. There'll be an if it is what I think it is. Yeah. Could be more an operational. There will be a bigger operational cost than you yeah. can imagine on that. Have to have someone certified. We have a request for reimbursement of costs associated with the redesignation application. So on page 121 of the agenda package here, there is a request for the reimbursement um, costs associated with the redesignation and the redes application associated with um, obviously the legal lot description. The total is $1,993.75. Council just heard this application this morning. Um, there was a hearing for it and then obviously the, the second and third readings. This was a direct control district application and there was gross inconvenience over the course of several years to this family. Um, basically, they went through quite a few hurdles, were told a few different things as the planner two discussed this morning in her presentation uh, with regards to this. So this was one of the files that I inherited to kind of get right back on track and provide a really seamless solution um, to make all parties happy. Um, especially the business owners for their direct control district redesignation. So staff are recommending option one, obviously, to reimburse the costs associated with that redesignation application due to the hardships and all the years that they've had to go back and forth with previous uh, staff. Where are we going on that? We haven't voted on Scott's motion. Oh, yet. thank you. <laughs> thank you. All in favor of the motion to direct administration. Motion is carried. Thank you. Yep. I'll move uh, Council choose option one to re reimburse the cost to the landowners. Questions or discussion? Good. All in favor? Motion is carried. Transportation and agriculture. Just right. Morning, Good morning, Council. Um, so you see in front of you the GM report for transportation and agriculture for the December uh, time frame. Uh, just some items of note. Uh, we had a, quite a busy December. Um, there was a number of staff uh, retained to complete some bridge files. We completed two large bridge files on Township Road 230 down near Clooney, as well as a uh, directional drill pipe push um, just south of Rockyford Road. Uh, south of the highway there. So they both went fairly well. Um, we kind of got them in right before the, the cold weather hit, so it was good good on our end here. Um, we still have some staff remaining to complete some stripping and, and grading of uh, some gravel pits that we're looking to crush uh, in the ne incoming and um, the upcoming spring months. So those are coming the highlights for December, and we will answer any questions if you have. Any questions? Any? Yeah, Mike, oh, that Rocky Ford Road. Has anybody actually went and took a picture of that culvert? Or um, so through the chair regarding the west access to the uh, Rocky Ford, um, I, I did inform the maintenance operator of that. Um, he has been monitoring that dip, um, the, the failed culvert mm -hmm. uh, to the west, the new ones that we put in. Um, he was going to go out um, this week and actually take pictures to make sure because he has noticed that it has gotten worse in the last. A few weeks, yeah. so uh, I'm hoping to get a report back from him by the end of next week on on what they're. I don't know if I'm direction. getting paranoid, but I think another one's developing closer to them steel bins. There's, it's probably a two foot culvert or so. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's just the road sagging, or, but it, it's a, there's a smaller culvert in there. I don't know if it's anything or not. I'm just maybe paranoid over that whole right. road. Um, yeah, no, I, I'll through the trail. I'll get the the maintenance crews to look at that as well. And one other, I've had a request. I'll just say it, see what council's feeling is. Uh, we did the rezoning for the rosebud today for that piece of land. I've had a request. Some of the ratepayers there 
that uh, septic system's been in for 30 years, I'm thinking. Septic tanks are getting old. Instead of replacing septic tanks, maybe they should be looking at uh, like a real sanitary sewer in Rosebud. Instead of the small line, we'd have to put in the bigger line and, and uh, do away with all the septic tanks. I know there's a cost involved. They're just curious to what that cost would be what the process would be. They're quite aware of the $4,000 they've been putting in and they're, they have to put more in, I don't know. So I'm thinking they're looking at a, what a, what a <laughs> cost would be to much work that would involve, I guess. So uh, through the chair, we did do a, a high level analysis of this a few months, about six months ago, um, at the request of council, during a planning and priorities meeting, just kind of look at what a gravity system would, would cost in that system, um, putting in manholes, uh, gravity mains, and then lift stations to get it up to our potential endpoint there. Uh, we had a high level figure, I don't recall exactly what it was, but I can, at the request of council, either go a little bit deeper into that if you like, and, and we could actually look at what a, a detailed design would be on that. I'm thinking it's around the four or five million is what I recall uh, just off the top here to, to replace that system in there. Um, going back, my recommendation was to uh, delay that installation because we have had a 30 year old system that has been operating quite well for us given the, the factors in there. Um, definitely I think in, in the future it will be a consideration but uh, in 30 years it may buy us another 30 years before replacements needed so I'm at the, the the call of council if you want me to look deeper into that there's a recess meeting I think you're aware of mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if councils any uh, qualms about Mike providing that information to the right pairs or rosebud the high level work that's been done already no harm. yeah I think mm -hmm. it's good to there's no harm in sharing what we know Okay. At this point, I don't think we need to go deeper if that high level work's been done. See what. Good starting spot. Okay. Donna, you had a question? Uh, yeah, train whistle. Uh, train whistle, yes. So, um, to the chair, the whistle cessation um, through Carsland. Uh, we did hear back from, the, uh, from CP Rail uh, just before Christmas that their initial review of that was that they weren't in favor of removing that uh, whistle because of the siding that is located close to that, rail, that crossing. And because of that, they thought that the sight lines may not be um, adequate to remove a whistle at that time. Um, I did make a request that if we were to still go forward and, and make a, a, a request to them to have it removed, what would be needed? Um, they require a full engineering study um, per, to be performed on that. Uh, so I'm currently waiting on, on quotes basically to get that engineering review done. Um, they're only performed by specific contractors um, associated with CP there. So um, I'm going to see if, if that's a requirement to use one of their contractors, engineers, or if we can actually get our own assessment done on it. Um, okay. So it, it will be a bit of a long process here. It looks like it's going to be a, a convincing them that it's going to be a safe uh, process to remove that that whistle through the, through the chair <clears throat> my brother-in-law used to be an engineer he's passed away now that's why he used to be he drove them trains back and forth along that line he said there's a by law they have to blow the whistle but they don't have to blow it for five minutes mm -hmm. when they're going through some of these intersections and you find that in the city when they're going through it's a tut -tut. But he said if you get people that are nervous sitting in that cab and they're going through there they will make sure everybody and their dog hears it he said it's a train it's you got to train the new guys going through to these uh, uh, locations got lots of people living in them that they have to back off a little bit but they, they have to blow those whistles mm -hmm. on them but they don't have to blow them for five minutes as they go through no but they um there has been a thing passed that if they if they have arms, you don't even have they don't have to. There's there has been municipalities that have gone forward and got them taken out of the out of the hamlets and towns and villages. I'm going to say no to that one just in Gleesh. And um, 
I, I just I think it, I, it was a request <laughs> by quite a few people to bring forward. So I'm, I still think we so should keep like going. It could be site specific, just to some uh, like there could be other factors beyond that. So we'll if you're getting a quote, really then you can bring that back and yep. Yeah, I, I, I through the chair, I think that's that. where we need to go. I think there is a possibility of of convincing them through this with the arms with the uh, the slow movement of the train through that community that we may have it's worth the going investigating a little bit deeper i think i think so too yeah any other questions yeah i have one for, <clears throat> for mike i had a request from a landowner on uh, east of 56 on uh, township road 252 that uh, and uh, south of range road 193 there's a uh, Undeveloped road lounge that goes for two and a half miles north and a half mile west. It comes off the 56 and goes, so there's an oil back there. There's one resident back there that we, we maintain the road up to their place. But from there, for half a mile and then two and a half miles south back down to 250, there are no residences on there. The road is undeveloped. And he said the grader's going over there at least five times in a, in a season. Hmm. And he, the road's getting, he's getting it so low they can't move the machine. This is the opposite okay. question of what yeah. we usually get, yeah, yeah. is they want somebody in there to maintain it so they can move their equipment down there. Now they're maintaining it so much that they're building the banks up and they can't move it. So he says once a year is all they need down there. They don't need them. It looks like it's on his regular route. Right. That he just keeps doing it and there's no need to. There's no, nobody, nobody lives on that road. Okay. No, only, it's just, just a mile and a half off the 56. That gets maintained, but then he goes from there and then goes back around and goes back down to the fire guard road. And right. there's no need to be going down to the fire guard okay. on that. It's, nope. this, it's this one right here. Yeah. Right here. Right. And those are good to know. Uh, usually, when we have those come up, it's like we did in near our node. We have a request in the past to have those maintained, yeah. and they just continue on as part of the thing. It's good to know, and they they, they cut back whenever. Yeah. Um, I've had the same thing, Ben. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same Another thing, right? Landowner phone says, "Why are you doing that?" Yeah, yeah. Any other no, questions? That's good. I'll pass it on. The motion to accept the transportation and agriculture report. So moved. Councillor Wilson has moved. All in favor? Motion is carried. The final report for the environmental audit. Um, I'll we accept it after. I'm pretty sure I got it. Okay. Councillor Wilson has moved that we accept it. Does administration want to speak to it? Uh, just a, a high level update that we, this is the final um, report on this that we completed. 90% uh, of our, our uh, infractions were rectified on this and we just have a few ongoing as far as water reporting, that sort of thing that we're going to hopefully clean up by the end of 2020. Excellent. It's great to see all the progress. In regards to that last one about the mm -hmm. rental facility that we have there, um, that kind of goes with this too for your risk assessment. Because environmental auditing, we look at that kind of thing. So those lease sites we lease out, that kind of thing is part of that too, right? Sorry, is he like uh, with the environmental audit report, we look at our, our basically our risks and what we're doing to fix them. And I think that kind of falls into play with um, that last one about the chlorinated water. And campground. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah, with the campground, you know I mean? the campground thing. Kind of yeah, oh, definitely, category. for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, really. I think with, we have two sites like that in the county, so. Yeah, sure. and um, to the chair, like we have a number of, of sites that the county owns that. Do have water facilities on them i know in the past we have requested even uh water sampling to be done by the leases uh i'm not sure where that's at right now and that'll be part of the investigation as part of that uh, eagle lake as well so a motion to accept the environmental water report did. oh you already did yes sorry any further questions or discussion All in favor? Motion is carried. Mm -hmm. I can take as many as I want. Uh, the Wheatland Regional Corporation Phase 3 Project Water Allocation. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is referring back to the, the Phase 3 
application for servicing Rosebud with regional water. Um, because it is located in a different, uh, in a, outside of the, the Bow River water basin, which is where the water is actually, um, sorry, the Red Deer River basin, where they're currently being pulled out of, we're now inputting uh, Bow River water basin um, supply into there. So we do need to find a license for this water. Um, we're not able to transfer the ground, high quality groundwater license into a surface water. And uh, therefore, there's, there's a few options that we looked at for this. Uh, we looked at potentially taking some allotment away from Galician. Um, there is, uh, we, we use about half the water that we uh, have for license in Galician, half to a third of the water. So there is some potential there for, for usage. Um, we steered away from that knowing that we have future development. We're hoping in Galician and uh, to not um, hinder that community, I guess, with, with any future uh, restrictions. Um, other option is, is to purchase a license straight out, um, start investigating that method. Um, definitely that is a long process and, and quite uh, complicated. Um, really the, the option that we thought was most fitting for this is, is to look at our current WID allotment. Um, we were granted a thousand acre feet of their license to utilize um, for our future developments um, back in 2011. So we have a thousand acre feet around 8,000 population we estimate uh, that that would service and it was intentionally or intended initially for new development. Uh, West Highway 1 was one. Eagle Shores uh, subdivision was, was another that they were kind of steering towards utilizing this water for when we first made the application. Um, and homesteads as well. So there's a few of them that we had on the list there. Um, some of them have fallen off and some of them have not progressed as fast as we'd like. So there is a potential I think here to, to allocate some of that license we have for that new future development. Um, and at least start the, the, the conversation with WID here. Uh, we haven't in, uh, approached them yet. We wanted to get council approval first before we start getting into the, into the process on this. Um, so we figured 53,290 cubic meters a year is around 43 acre feet of our 1,000 acre foot alignment. So it's not a huge uh, pull from that, that license. It still leaves a lot of potential for future growth. Um, and truthfully, we haven't utilized one drop of that allotment of yet since we've got it. We've allocated a few, um, or had a few requests, and I believe we'll have to confirm. I think there is a little bit of that allocation that was put towards homesteads in a council resolution that will likely have to be um, reviewed, but it's not going to worry with, with taking this 44 acre feet out of there. I'll move that uh, council approve the administration to allocate 53,290 cubic meters of supply and convenience of wall water agreement with the WID or Wheatland Regional Corporation phase three. I think this is the first time we're using any of that water. Uh, through the chair, it wouldn't be the first time we've allocated it, yeah. but uh, it, it would be the first time it's used, so. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, maybe we will. There's no correspondence. So we'll recess for lunch and come back to our closed sessions after no lunch. lunch. There's no lunch yet? Oh. It'll be here. <laughs> I'm really hungry for there not to be any lunch. I'm starving. Don't get hangry. Yeah. Too late. You're talking to Will. At 12.30, we moved in camera. I did. I'll move out of camera. All in favor of coming out of camera? Motion is carried. We'll be back in public session. We have representatives from the Strathmore District Agriculture Society. Welcome. If you guys want to just come up to the microphone.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us. My name is Steph LeBlanc. I'm the uh, newly elected uh, president of the Strathmore District Ag Society. And, and we are here to discuss and to present our five-year strategic plan. Uh, this plan has been put together by a bunch of people, a lot of people and a lot of committees that I've met over the last two years have done an excellent job to try to put forward a plan that would be essentially promoting the whole region and rodeo and everything that we can do as a service as we provide for the Act Society. So without any further ado, I'll pass it on to the person that's actually better than I am at this. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know about that, but thank you, Steph. So my name is Ryan Schmidt, and I'm the general manager of the Agricultural Society. Um, so I'm kind of tasked now by our board of directors with implementing this five-year plan with their support and direction. And so uh, I'd like to begin by just reminding um, what, what is the Agricultural Society all about? And um, on the third slide here, we've got our mission statement. So it's actually provided by the government of Alberta under the Alberta Agricultural Societies Act. And the intent of agricultural societies is to encourage improvement in agriculture and in the quality of lives of persons living in an agricultural community by developing programs, services, and facilities based on the needs of the agricultural community. Sorry, I didn't realize I was in control of this, but uh, I do now. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, so we do a lot of things at the Ag Society already that you may know about. Um, as we go forward in this five-year plan, we're really trying to stay true to our mission. So we do things to serve the broader community, but um, we're going to remain true and try to stay focused on ensuring that that agricultural aspect of our mission is um, paid attention to in all the things that we do. So there's three main components um, or vision portions of this plan that we're trying to accomplish as we grow the agricultural society. So the first is providing excellence in community recreation, recreational facilities and services. The second is to be known as the heart of rodeo and the development of its athletes in Alberta. And the third is to be a unique provider of practical ranching skills and education. So how are we going to go about doing these? Uh, with providing excellence in community recreational facilities, what we really mean here in large part is make sure that the things we do already, we're doing them with excellence. So before we move on to establish new programs or new facilities, let's make sure we're doing with excellence what we already do. So part of this plan will be improvements and updates to our baseball diamonds and also to our campground. Um, secondly, we're going to be completing a Remuda Link project, which just upgrades the facilities that we have available to the community groups that um, rent or use space free of charge from us. So there's a ton of um, other groups in the area, like the Wheatland Quilting Club, for example, uh, the Cadets, Scouts. They use our facilities, and part of what we want to do is to continue to serve those other community groups. Um, and it's also about utilization rates. So let's make sure that we're, we're using our current facilities with maximum efficiency. Uh, so one of the big parts of that is to make better use of our grandstand. In addition to adding in more rodeos, which we've already done during the past year, we're going to establish the Cowboy Town Concert Series. So this is the idea here is that we'll start off with one concert. The first one will be on June the 6th. We're talking about you know pretty pretty good name bands, and if that works, we'll uh, go to two concerts a year. We're we're always looking for more um, western themed agricultural rodeo type of events to utilize our grounds and especially the grandstands. Um, for the heart of rodeo and the development of its athletes in Alberta, three key aspects are expanding the rodeo school that we established this past year. So we started with just bull riding. We're going to take that to all the rough stock events. Uh, this next summer and add the timed events after that if it goes well. Secondly, we're going to do the rodeo infield expansion project, which is essentially to replace our current announcers booth and add some private suites on that side. And third, and this is probably the biggest one, if for the 50th anniversary of our agricultural society, which would be 2023, we would like to be in a position to open an indoor arena um, on our grounds, which will allow us to accomplish our agricultural mission year round. Right now, we're somewhat limited by weather like this, but uh, if we did have an indoor facility, uh, that would allow 4-H clubs, uh, roping clubs, concerts, PB, pro bull riding events, for example, to happen throughout the year. 
Uh, and finally, we want to become a unique provider of practical ranching skills and education. So we hope to establish um, a practical ranching school on the 160 acres that we own right here in Wheatland County. Uh, and this would be an opportunity for kids who maybe didn't grow up on the farm or a ranch, um, or maybe they did but they want to learn more, to work under a newly developed ranching committee and learn boots on the ground ranching skills. So this is going to be different than an academic program. This is going to be showing up to work and learn and um, giving kids an opportunity to do that. And of course through the indoor arena um, we'll be able to pursue our agricultural mission uh, year round. So just an idea of the timeline here. This next year is about uh, solidifying our finances to prepare for growth. So we're going to be starting to put away capital to fund some of these expansion projects. Uh, but we'll also complete our baseball and campground upgrades. We'll do our first of the concert series and we'll expand the rodeo school. Um, the following year in 2020, 2021 will be the infant start of the practical ranching school. The rodeo school should be rolled out to all the events at that point and we will do upgrades to our playground structures. Um, the following year hopefully is the rodeo infield expansion project and the year after uh, the indoor arena facility for our 50th anniversary. In the fifth year of our strategic plan we will refocus and talk about the next five years but we'll probably have a lot of tweaking to do on all the growth we've done and we'll want to make sure everything's running efficiently. We'll focus on that in year five. Um, so on the baseball diamond upgrades we're going to focus uh, for a start on irrigation repairs, grass improvements, leveling the grounds. This is because some of you probably know our grounds are on top of the old town of Strathmore dump. So as things decompose underground the shape of the field tends to change a little bit so we constantly have to kind of work on that. So we'll do that. We're also going to be seeking a new year round sponsor for the diamonds. In the campground upgrade, um, here there's a number of things going on. Um, it's about upgrading the infrastructure there, but it's also about making sure we have good guidelines for our buildings, for our year-round campers, making sure that we've got um, the right rules in place for accessory buildings, etc. But we've got a lot of trees that are at end of life. We're going to be removing some of these trees and placing uh, new ones. We're going to do some electrical work. Um, we're going to upgrade roads and driveways, uh, add Wi-Fi, new vending machines and construct one mini cabin. The idea here is really about being competitive um, in the campground market. We want to draw tourists to the area. We want to have permanent campers living in our campground, which we already do, but more of that. So we're just about staying competitive. This is an important revenue driver for the Ag Society. So we want to make sure we're staying on top of that. The Remuda Link project actually links two existing buildings, our Remuda building and our Livestock Pavilion building. And as I said before, this adds a little bit of a rental space for us, for community groups to use as well. But it also will add washrooms making our existing Remuda building a rentable facility. So community groups that currently use our Quonset, which is a little cold and a little old, will be able to now use instead the Remuda building. It'll be a lot more comfortable for them in there and we'll be delivering a better product that way. Uh, the Cowboy Town Concert Series. So on January 27th, we're going to announce the first artists that we've signed to um, come and put on that first concert. And we want to we want to have some good names here, so we start off big. But we hope that everybody in Wheatland County and uh, nearby will come out to check out this first concert, so we can have a first success. And if that goes well, we'll add a second concert a year um, going forward, perhaps associated with the Stampede. Uh, the rodeo school, I think I've kind of laid this one out. This is a picture from our first school this past year. Um, and there's just a bit of uh, a schedule there for when we'll be adding in the different events. Um, this again is just kind of a break even initiative for us. Uh, the students pay a really reasonable tuition. And the idea is that as we go forward, you know, when any rodeo kid thinks about hey you know going to rodeo school they think about coming here like this is where you go it's timed so it's just before the start of the high school rodeo season so just in that back half of August, of August students can come here sharpen their skills we've had some great coaches involved and we're going to look to have great coaches going forward. 
So the rodeo infield expansion project, that, that announcer's booth we do have on the far side, this is nearing end of life. It's been there for quite a while. So we want to replace that announcer's booth and probably add four to six suites um, on that side of our, of our infield. The idea here is to perhaps target a mid-sized corporate um, companies, perhaps from Calgary, who can't afford to go to the Calgary Stampede in a suite that's $100,000. But you know, in our region, we can offer the same product at a much better price and still be a good revenue source for the Strathmore Stampede. And so that's the idea with the suites. Um, these are some pictures from Pinoca. They recently did a very similar project. They added 10 suites and they funded them uh, based in part on long-term commitments from these mid-sized corporate companies. We'll still have all our suites on the other side, which um, will still be available at kind of a more, the more reasonable rate that we currently have those suites priced at. So that again will just help with the fiscal stability of the Ag Society and the Strathmore Stampede. And finally, you know, the most challenging part of this whole strategic plan is this indoor arena. Um, but it would ultimately allow us to expand our mission. And this is going to be done in stages. So the first thing that we want to do is probably a feasibility study, make sure that we believe the demand is out there, but make sure that we can prove the demand is out there before we go forward on something like this. We'll then proceed to drawings and putting together the financial plan. I'll be checking in with the board at regular intervals to make sure that this is still making sense each step of the way uh, that we go. But ultimately, we do believe that this is probably a viable project and um, we hope that we can bring a great facility to the area uh, by pursuing this. As I said, it will be, uh, you know, it, it will have seating capacity so that we can have larger events go on in there year round, concerts, uh, bull riding, rodeos, you know, right through the winter really. So that's, that's kind of the, the crown on this plan and we hope to be able to accomplish that. The practical ranching school though is probably the one that's most at the heart of our mission. And I, I've said most about this already. I'll just add that as it grows, I think we'd seek to try and tie it in with high schools or colleges in the region in order to perhaps um, make sure that kids could get credit for this learning. Um, and it's probably also a great way to get additional funding and support by being tied in with schools. But this one is really at the heart of what we want to be doing. And we are already working on forming the new ranching committee under the Ag Society, which will uh, guide the development of the practical ranching school. So that's, I tried to be as concise as I could, I could probably talk for an hour, but that will tell you basically what we're trying to accomplish in the next five years. And of course, um, we would be very interested to have ongoing discussions with Wheatland County about how we could um, work together on some of these things. We're not here with an ask. Um, to me, I think it's more gonna be about, you know, where is their interest and where can the, how can Wheatland County be a part of this in a way that will just enhance the benefit of the whole community. So I'm sure we'll have many conversations about it as we go forward, but that is my presentation. Thank you for your time. That's a nice goal. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Ryan or Steph? Make a statement. It's, it's really discouraging when you guys are talking about end of life trees and I planted some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would just say that uh, I, not speaking for ASB, but I know one of our mandates is to help with education on, and ASB is the uh, Agriculture Service Board. Right. And uh, I'd be very interested in having discussions with that board and the Ag Society on the ranching school because I think. We as a board have decided that education is one of the most important things in our industry. So we'd be happy to meet with you guys and discuss how we can collaborate going forward. Sounds great. Yeah, it's a very exciting plan. Yes, very Ambitious, I love it. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> really good, I like it. I've been, I've been involved up there quite a bit. Uh, Fun Country Riders, my daughter is a Calgary show rider. So yeah, it's, there's a definite need for an indoor facility in Strathmore, I can see that. That's good for you guys for doing that. Where would the, Where would the arena be? Located. 
Where would the arena be located? That's so the intent is to have it on our grounds in like where the ag grounds are in Strathmore. Unless, um, there's got to be an unless in there, isn't there? <laughs> well, I think they're like at, the, the real challenge comes at Strathmore Stampede. Like that's when that whole grounds is utilized is parking and camping. And so the reality is we put anywhere we put it there, it will have other impacts. So we haven't settled on a location. I think that's kind of the thinking is that we try to put it in there. Uh, but you know, it, it is, it is also possible that it could be on our other property, on, um, which is in Wheatland County, just outside the town boundary. So I think that's a possibility. There's many, there's many locations on the grounds it could be. The main issue is how it affects everybody and who is going to be partnered with us to be able to build this and how we can integrate it in part of the other plans, right? And so really this is what we're looking for at the end of the day is interaction with other stakeholders to be able to maximize the assets as much as possible for everybody. How, how, uh, what's the square footage of your, of your Remuda building? The, the newer one. Uh, yeah, I want to say that one is about 3,300 square feet. 3,300? Yeah, roughly. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> so, I, Councillor Wilson is absolutely right. This is a very much in line with the strategic priorities of our Ag Services Board. So I think he, Jason's our chair. He'll probably reach out Ask most of... Yeah, he may not be chair tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but he is today. All right. He is today. The majority of us sit on our Ag Service Board, but we also have members at large from our Ag community that also sit on that board. So it might be good to have this presentation presented to that board as well and just see where there's synergies or where we can work together on things. And as well, I'm sure our council will have discussions and be back in touch with you to see how we can work together. Sounds good, That's, that'd be great. Any other questions? Can answer that. We last year when we went to the A's convention in Edmonton, which is the uh, we did discuss with the local uh, other um, ag societies, and there is an appetite. But of course, everybody wants the uh, they want to be on the forefront, right? And so we took it on, and since we have a great facilities, and you know, we have so there is an appetite. It's going to be all, all uh, to all of us to trying to get everybody on board on that one, but uh, we're already like, you know, we're already in discussion. Let's say with the uh, Alberta, uh, with the high school rodeos, we're already having discussion with those folks to be able to be part of the bigger system, right? even with CPRA for that matter. I was thinking more. We did, yes. Yeah, they did. We were, in, you know, I'm not going to say that we had full-on official discussion about it, but we did mention it. We'll be seeing them all shortly at the convention. At the end of the month. At the end of the month. So, we'll, like, I know Standard, Sik Sika. Um, you name it. Yeah, Standard. we can. Yeah. Garz Lend us as well, yeah. Does, yeah. Yeah, so it's a good idea. Any other questions? Just a comment. <clears throat> Being an agricultural society, I was at the grounds last year for, what was it, Ben? Oh, for the rodeo finals for the Chinook. And I noticed a few plants growing around on the grounds that shouldn't have been there. Mm. I'm just wondering if being an agricultural we have a very competent uh, weed inspectors here in the county. I'm sure they would help you out. <laughs> there are some plants there that, being an agricultural society, I don't, I noticed them. I might have been the only one there. I don't know. We would greatly appreciate um, 
to go through those plants and <laughs> find a plan to take care of them. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the I, town has weed inspectors as yeah. well, right? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They, I think they, they, oh, they do now? Or did they contract yeah. ours? No, they got their own contract. Yeah, I believe they have ago. their own. Yeah. Just for jurisdiction, they you might want to reach out to the okay, town because sure. they yeah. have weed inspection. Yeah, but thank you for raising that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. We'll definitely look at that. If you need help pinpointing them next year, I certainly show them out to your inspector. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to come by any time. We'll go. <laughs> we'll wait till the weather improves. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your time in bringing your strategic plan in and sharing it with council. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. and we'll thank you for, for sure. everything that you guys do to support our ag society throughout the year. We know you've come to the table to help us out on various things, so thank you to council for that. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. With Point that, I will move us back in camera. All in favor? Oh. Thank you. Our closed session. Uh, on behalf of Council with Regret, I would like to move to approve Retirement Incentive Program uh, application for employee number 5931. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. There's a motion regarding 6.2, the personnel matter. I'll make a motion to appoint Brian Henderson as CAO pursuant to the MGA and the Wheatland County CAO bylaw 2013-06 according to the terms in the CAO employment agreement. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Congratulations, sir. Yeah, congratulations, Brian. We also have, yes, and we're very pleased to appoint you. Thank you. Question your sanity, but good for you. <laughs> uh, there is also a motion arising from the closed session 6.5. Uh, I'll move that council choose option one to approve bylaw 2020 10 uh, and sorry option one that council move first reading on bylaw 2020 10 this being a bylaw to redesignate 128.74 acres on plan 081 3350 block one lot one from industrial general district to public utility district any questions or discussion? Question, just a question. By Gleeson. I think we always do it just by the legal land, don't so we? So just um, uh, through the Reeve, it's typically legal lot description when we um, do these resolutions? But there's not a community. So we can, I mean, we can alter it. I've, I've never seen that before in a formal resolution going through this process, but I mean, it would be loose if we put the specific division and there but, will be circulation. And that's my we will, we will be circulating this, Adjacent right? So after this meeting, I'll be discussing with staff the letter that's going out in terms of the circulation and the information specifically for this. And then the background information would be included for second and third, like the public hearing and second yeah. and third reading consideration. That's correct to council, yes. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Motion is carried. Motion for a public hearing. I'll move the council uh, have a public hearing for bylaw 2020-10 to be scheduled on March 3rd, 2020 to commence at 9 a.m. in the Wheatland County Council. Any questions or discussion? Nine. All in favor? Motion is carried. 
A motion to adjourn. Moved. Ben has moved. All in favor? Motion is carried. Second, third, and fourth.